kind of look they forward. enjoy the present moment, even though they know with certainty that the wave will eventually end. They fully enjoy this wave <laughs> with the wisdom and awareness that there are always more waves coming. The surfer knows they don't have to ride every single wave that comes their way. They have the freedom and the power to choose which waves to take and which waves to let pass by. The surfer knows that the only way to live is by putting themselves out there in the water. You can't catch any waves sitting on the shore. There's always a risk of getting crushed by a wave, but the rewards are worth it. Amen. Things that successful people see boots. But you only need the light. No, easy. Annihilating is easy. Raising things to the ground is easy. Trying to fix what's broken is hard. Hope is hard. Life is... You believed in me. What makes a real man? It used to happen. Most important. Can I ask you something? Be the strongest, most honorable, best version of yourself. Don't be a bad person. Be a good person. Tell the truth. Be honorable. Protect the people that you care about. Be polite to everybody. Make as much money as you can. Go to the gym. Get in good shape. Find other guys who have the same mission. That's what you need to do. All right. Thanks for being a part of our little trash and treasure ritual, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is our greatest honor to bring to our show Matt Dayton, man. Welcome Dude. to the show, brother. Yeah, good to be here, with you guys. Yeah, thanks for coming. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, yeah this is rad. So how about our how about our little pre-show ritual today, dude? <laughs> that was nice. You know, Always we, some good motivation, right, dude? Love it. We uh, for for everybody that doesn't know, I I did what I normally do, just talk trash to talk trash to the boys, and I challenged them to an ice bath, and they took it on like a champ, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah! Max steps in, he's like, ah, I can do five. You did three. <laughs> <laughs> I got five, bro. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was nice. Surprised uh, myself on that one, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Um, you know, you want to let the listeners know a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from, what do you do, yep. and the whole nine. Yeah, let them know, man. Yeah. Um, well, I was born and raised in Longwood, Florida. Um, uh, loved uh, growing up there. I grew up in an amazing neighborhood called Rolling Hills. Uh, there's a golf course surrounding you know, the whole neighborhood, and uh, ride a little uh, public course, and um, that was my playground growing up. Yeah, you know, it was. Uh, to this day, I still have dreams about it. You know, being there and <laughs> just cruising through the hood with my friends. Um, and so, yeah, I was I was blessed to grow up around there, and that was before you know the madness of Orlando spread. And, oh, that's um, wild, man! You know, it was it was still. What year was this? Uh, I mean, so I was I was born in '74, and uh, so this is like kind of when Disney was just starting, and yeah. um, you know things were starting to grow, but it was still pretty laid back up yeah. in Longwood, like backwoods and, Florida type shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's yeah, awesome. and uh, so I was blessed to to grow up there, um, and as we chatted about earlier, I was adopted. Mm-hmm. Um, at, I think I was two days old. And uh, the really cool story, my um, biological mom, she was a young single mom. I think I've, I've since uh, uh, reconnected with her and uh, have heard the, her side of the story, which has been really neat to hear because I, I had heard things from my adoptive parents but didn't know the real story you know, completely. Yeah. And um, so my biological mom uh, was really adamant about me having some good uh, Christian parents and um, and her parents were you know they were not happy obviously that she got pregnant without being married and mm-hmm. um, and so they were uh, did not want her to keep me uh, and wanted to uh, give me up for adoption and just kind of was like hey let's go to a um, uh, adoption agency where we can just kind of be done with this, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so she went, but didn't feel comfortable. She, again, was very adamant. Like I want, uh, my child to go to a good, you know, Christian home. And I like want to be guaranteed of that, you know? And as a 21 year old single woman, I mean, it's pretty impressive. Especially to be faced with that. Like just, just to hear the term, you know, like be done with it. Right. And, you know, that's your life. Like, brother, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You know, from yeah. From my heart, man. Because, I mean, while I walked a very different path, I know that. Um, so, you know, shout out to your mom, your biological mom. Yeah, absolutely. Because that 
couldn't have been easy for her either. Right, right. Well, and it's so much uh, so, and this is part of, you know, I knew that her parents, I mean, my, my grandparents, basically, I knew mm-hmm. that they were um, not for me staying with her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but she actually, she pushed it so much that they ended up asking her to leave the house. And uh, like basically kicked her out of the Good house. Good for her, man. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Amen to the so. Amazing, I mean, was, I was like, wow. So I mean, I knew when she told me that that I was like, you know, God was in my life, you know, way before I was one. out of the womb. Yeah, I mean, I was yeah, in the womb, and He was looking out for me for sure. Yeah. So, um, so she she left her house, and soon after that, she met a lawyer. Uh, in town um, that him, uh, the lawyer and his wife had started kind of a ministry of helping single moms wow. with adoption and, um, and finding them places to stay so they could have the child and, and then he would help them out with the adoption as the attorney. And so, um, so that was just a, a you know, random like meeting they met, found out the situation and they said, hey, we want to help you. And I, I think it was even like the first mom. I mean, they had just kind of started helping. And this, this was the first time they was, were, were, was helping. I know. redact my previous statement about lawyers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some good ones out Hell there. Hell yeah, no dude. That's amazing, it. No bro. No doubt about it. So, um, so, yeah, they helped her get a place, saw you know, everything through the uh, pregnancy. He did the adoption, and then he actually knew – my adopted parents mm-hmm. um we lived or my, my adopted parents lived right across the golf course in rolling hills no way. i mean literally right across i mean probably a mile if that mm-hmm. and um and so my adopted parents had basically been praying you know for a child uh, they were not able to have their own mm-hmm. and um so i come along you know a few months later and he said well i, I know exactly or to take this little boy. And uh, they actually prayed for a, a blonde haired blue eyed boy. And <laughs> there you go. Comes, yeah. Yeah. Comes and, day. Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> Two days uh, after I was born, uh, he actually brought me to the doorstep to my uh, adopted parents. He was uh, Howard and, and Beverly Dayton. So Man. that is that was my uh, the way I. It's as if an angel carried, carried you up there himself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. So. Um, so I obviously owe a lot to uh, his. His name is John Jones. Shout out, John. Shout out to John Jones, John yeah, and they're... Carolyn Jones. Uh, they are some pretty special people. Hell yeah, that's so, awesome. Keep, man. keep up the good work, y'all. That's, yes. that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the kind of humans we need. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. So um, yeah, that's where it started. Uh, Rolling Hills and Longwood, and okay. uh, you know, I grew up there. Um, Skateboarding. Oh yeah, yeah. Obvious, okay, I was, yeah. I was, I'm yeah. trying to do the mental <clears throat> connection. Okay. A lot of good hills to skateboard on. All right. Um, we used to. So yeah, that that as I was growing up, again, amazing neighborhood to grow up in. A lot of kids, and uh, we used to set up these like launch ramps, and you know that's when half pipes were starting. Everybody was building them in their backyard, and <laughs> but we specifically we had a great street that was uh, didn't have a lot of traffic on it in front of our house, and so. We used to set up these <laughs> launch ramps with like bricks, yep. sitting like bricks stacked and up. And I mean, I'm telling you, like a piece of wood on it. Oh you know, yeah, I mean, just barely hanging on. You know, somebody'd hit it and the bricks would fall, and they go. I mean, it was not. I don't know how nobody died. I mean, we used to jump over each other. Oh yeah. You know, all know kinds of different days, objects. Sure. See how far you can go. I mean, it was madness. But you ever had though? I remember we did it one time, and the wood broke. Like as you go up, oh, and it just yeah, caved yeah. in. Yeah. And just <laughs> oh yeah, tumbles many, over it many times. Well, I think that's what <laughs> makes it. You know, like I mean, I I remember riding a bike, no helmet. I, yeah, I, I cased it so like. Parents today would see the way I fell before, and they'd be rushing me to the hospital. But it was like, right? I was just you know, rub Positive. some dirt on it. And yeah, fly, yeah, dude. <laughs> put some put some tussin <laughs> on it. Yeah, you go. Yeah. You'll be all right. Right? Yeah. Awesome. I mean, those were the good old days, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I tell people all the time. I believe that the 80s and the 90s were probably a couple of the best decades to be a kid and grow up Mm -hmm. because there was just there was there was a little bit of technology that was starting but not too much and the creativity you know the music Mm -hmm. the movies like 
it was just an amazing time to be alive on the planet, right? right? Yeah. You got well, Back to the Future coming out, yeah. and then skateboarding and everything that you love is growing. Yeah. yeah. And I love that you put emphasis on like technology hadn't taken over yet. Yeah, right, well, I was right. just about to say we, him and I are like the last of that yeah. of that generation where we actually grew up where we had internet, both. internet still wasn't a thing until we were right. like what five, six, seven, yeah, eight. And so even then, had like little... you had to be connected to exactly. Have it. Right. I remember having not everybody to be home. had it. I remember the, when the street lights were your clock. Mm-hmm. I remember those days, but then I also remember playing video games at like you know eighteen until you couldn't like hold your eyes open anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. it's just it's wild, man. Yeah, yeah. Duck well, what, hunting was the, what was was the, the uh, Nintendo was no, like yeah, the yeah, biggest I technology, and when, when I was a kid in Venezuela, right? it's, like, it's like Doug, we were like, wow, no way, you can point a gun to a TV and actually like, shoot ducks. I remember Super Mario. <laughs> man, yeah, was Super amazing. Mario. That was, that was the one. Yep, yeah, that was the one I actually awesome. got into. I didn't get into a lot of video game stuff, but That's that great. was one I did. Just legendary. And, uh, you know, like Tetris and mm-hmm. like yeah. Pac-Man yeah, and all, yeah, the, yeah. all the classics. But, uh, yeah, it was more a lot more of being outside, mm-hmm. hitting launch ramps and yeah. getting dirty. It makes you know, total yeah. sense. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, how long before you ended up a coastal man? Um, honestly, so a, a, quite a while. I started surfing. I my parents used to bring us over here, <clears throat> like spring break and you know okay. summers mm-hmm. yep. and all that. Um, so we would stay sometimes like a week at a condo or something. And mm-hmm. um, so basically, the first time I was introduced to the ocean and kind of started falling in love with it. Uh, we were staying in a condo over here, pretty close to like where Pat lives right. down that way. Right and um, and so I think some of our neighbors had a boogie board, you know. Uh, and yeah. uh, and I was just like, I gotta try this thing, you know. Yeah. So me and a couple buddies, I think we started going out like every day, and just like those inside wedgy, barely, you know, mm-hmm. beach break kind of waves. And uh, and I just fell in love with it. Yeah. You know, it was just something I was like. <laughs> This is just another world, yeah. and I just am having the best time ever. And it's, you really do, um, when you paddle out there, it's just, it's another world that you, yeah. you and, it's a feeling of freedom that you really can't feel anywhere else. Dude, yeah. It was, it was like fishing a, is the closest thing I've come to. Yeah. No, to yep. You know, I call alone it. in the boat, nobody around. Just, right, right. There's something Birds. there, man. Yeah, it's Especially beautiful. like being born in Florida. Mm-hmm. I, I, like, I truly believe it's in our DNA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, for me, it was church before church. Right, you know, it was it was it was God before I knew what God was. Like it didn't matter how angry I was, yeah. and you, like you could be totally blown out, washing machine out. Yep. If I just went out and paddled, like just get out there by myself yep. for thirty minutes and just go sit on the board right. and look out on the horizon. Yeah. When I get to my truck, I'm like, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's that unexpected X factor. Yeah, hundred you know? percent. Yeah. Even yeah. now, like body surfing that inside break you're talking about with my boy right, Mike, right. who I came up with, it's so much fun. Like, yeah. <laughs> to this day, I love it. Bro. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, being in the ocean, I mean, there's nothing like it. And I think it's that, you know, being surrounded by, you know, a creation, you know, nature. I mean, that's what God, he created it for a lot of it, you know, exactly. just so we could be in his environment yeah, and part of it. show, you know, show himself to us through it. Wow, and um, nice. it's just the, the full reset for me. I mean, I, there's a lot of times when I, I really, I actually haven't been surfing a lot lately um, and I, I've been dealing with a lot of things like in my own head, but I'm like, I have to remind myself, like I need to get out there. Cause yeah. it's not about, I mean, I love to surf, but it's so much more of it is about like the reset the that health, happens yeah. and takes place yeah, when yeah. you get out there, you know? Yeah. So um, really for the past um, five or even 10 years, surfing has been more of a, a mental reset for me um, and more important in that aspect than the physical or just mm-hmm. even going and riding waves, enjoying riding waves. Yeah. I mean, I love doing that, but the, the mental aspect has become keeping my mental health up uh, through surfing has been really important. I totally get that. Like right now I'm going, I'm coming out of that same funk and I haven't surfed in probably two months because mm-hmm. it's like, it's like I'm almost, I feel like I don't deserve it. Or there was like a time when it was yeah. really dark that like I knew, <clears throat> it was almost like I knew how good I would feel when I was done. And it's yeah. such a pure thing that I was like, no, nah, not right now. Yeah. But, that's just me being a puss, really. Yeah, like, right, that's exactly right. what I'm supposed to do. You yeah. Know? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah All man. right, so we got you on a boogie board now, and you're yeah. hooked, hook, line, and sinker, dude. Like, <laughs> it's over. Man, yeah. Your destiny has been set. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, from there, it was uh, obviously just, like, 
okay, what do you do next? You know, and started <laughs> looking, looking in surfing magazines yeah. and you're like, well, that looks a lot cooler than laying on this boogie board. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to learn how to do that. You know, <laughs> who was running the yeah. game back then? Like when you first, like who was the king, king swinging out there? Uh, you mean around here? No, just like you open like, that magazine. No. Cover yeah, full who was, who was inspiring? Yeah, who was, I mean, that, who was the that was the days of Curran, okay. uh, Aki, yeah. Martin Potter, okay. uh, right. Tom Carroll. Like yeah, the, I mean, the, the those pioneers, were the, the OGs. The, the gods of surfing yeah. for sure. Um, I mean, arguably Curran, you know, him, um, you know, the style, the style master. Yeah. Goat. Like, yeah, yeah, goat yeah, yeah. For, sure. for sure. I mean, Obviously, you know, we consider Kelly the goat. Well, yeah. But well, he was inspired he, by exactly. Yeah, if you're exactly mentoring right. the so, goat, then I think there wouldn't be if, if the goat was looking no, at that guy. Yeah. Yeah. then that's the guy. Yeah, there wouldn't that, be no Slater without Tom Curran. So. Exactly. I would say, exactly. competitive. In my opinion, competitively and competitive surfing. Oh, Kelly is. Yeah, yeah, hundred like, percent. He like, took it to a whole other universe, right? right. <laughs> Absolutely, just another planet or... Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> like the Michael Jordan of surfing. Yes, exactly. yeah, yeah. Could you it's... imagine the mental games he was playing and like in the heat of it, where he's like Pete right. Kelly? No. He's like, I'm gonna win. Yeah, by well, any means that's necessary. one thing like, you said it. You said it perfectly. The mental games that he would play. The one, only one that reminds me of that kind of mental tenacity is is uh gabriel medina but he, even though he pisses a lot of people off <laughs> oh, yeah. is the ability of him understanding how the system works right right and the way he's able to just yeah i mean his surfing speaks for itself but oh, yeah the way he understands the system of all this competition is oh incredible. yeah across the board truly man. incredible kobe yeah. the way he played people like mm -hmm. he was he was gonna put you to the test and yeah. he was gonna find your weakness and if you showed it to him he's gonna exploit it yeah, yeah. you know randy johnson when randy johnson was on the mound man. he was trying to scare you yeah, yeah, like yeah. he's he, like he's like yes, I throw 100 miles an hour, <laughs> yeah. and I'm about to test your will. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah. when that bird crossed him and he oh hit my God, that bird, I'm sure, that, I'm, sure oh, yeah, that, yeah. I'm sure that played some fear in some people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you hold the bat and just <laughs> <laughs> you just saw your death. That's what you baseball. You're like. Oh, like, that's what your head's gonna look like if it hits you. Oh, man. All right, so. You should throw the the clips that we're talking about if yeah. you can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, kinda, yeah, we're gonna yeah, short them off. Awesome. That'd be kinda cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Clip it. it. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? No, you just like yeah, we were supposed to be doing that anyways. Yeah, like yeah. That. Um do you remember what your first surfboard was? Of course. Okay, um, my man. Are you kidding me? So it was uh this is kinda cool. So it was John Jones. The guy that did yeah, the adoption, uh -huh. it was from his adopted son. I bought my first shirt. No way. Yeah, it's a true story. Cool oh, yeah. Shit. How crazy is that? That's so, amazing. yeah, he ended up adopting three kids. And uh, Randy Jones different. was his oldest. Mm -hmm. And it was from him that I got my first surfboard. It was a fox. Uh, Greg Loher. The shape okay. Yeah, okay. I've still got a picture with it. And uh, it, I got it, and Randy had put like stickers, you know, <laughs> yeah. all over this thing. I was like, "This is the coolest thing ever!" <laughs> yeah, all so the sick. stickers, and it, I was, you know, Randy was a little older than me, so I was like, "It's awesome how it has to change, even from like, you know, you were in the '80s, grew up, growing up in the '80s and '90s, and we were growing up in the 2000s, and." That's the same thing. That like we would like see a new sticker and be like, "Oh, oh yeah, cool dude. On the board. Oh yeah, put it on the side." <laughs> my, my dresser was just top to bottom. Oh god, stickers, bro. Right? Mine was yeah. a five five Mad Dog Fun shape. Nice three fin okay. setup. Mm -hmm. I don't know because like my dad, my biological father. Okay. You know he he had me on a board before I could walk. Yeah, yeah, the baby on the shoulders. Like he was good at nothing about being a father or a human except <laughs> surfing. Right, and, and he made sure I knew it. And I remember the day. I remember the the image. Do you? You probably both remember, just like you said. Like I remember it like it was a play by play. The first wave I rode, where I stood okay. up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember the color of the bikini huh. that the lady was wearing <laughs> in the no inside. Way. Yeah. Wow. Well, because I remember it was like my dad was old school. Like, because he's he's just waiting on the outside, pushing me into wave these monster waves. I'm like fucking five. Yeah. And he's pushing me in these big waves, and like he's doing shit like quit being a pussy, you know, quit being a pussy. <laughs> and I yeah. I remember standing up that night. I was eating dinner. I came out. The Mad Dogs. Used Mad Dog board is sitting there on the porch and mm. yeah, no it was feeling, the rest no is history. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your first board, yeah, you'll never board, forget yes. that. There's it's something nice. special there. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I, I remember we had a pool growing up um, in our backyard. You know, my parents built a pool, and um, so summers, you know, we're in there all summer. But I remember that board. I would go because I'm like, you know, we're like 45 yeah, minutes away. away. And I'm like, I got to use this thing. Like, yeah. I want to ride it somehow. So I used to 
put it at <coughs> the edge of the pool, <laughs> go back, run, and then just try and scoot across. <laughs> yeah. And I ended up, of course, like I'd kind of fall occasionally and it hit the side and ding it all up, you know. So, mm. but I was like, hey, I'm getting some use out of it. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even care, you know. That's why I could never, like, I've, I lived in Orlando once. Yeah, it, it was tough. Even oh. to this day, like trying to think about moving away from the ocean. Right, like, right. Because you see the way the growth is here. Yeah. I'm like I'm like, how do you leave the salt water? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Like, right. It, yeah. It may be a mountain. Like if I could snowboard, that's a. Yep. I, I could see that being an alternative, but snowboarding hurts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's yeah, just living sure. in the cold, man. I just can't. I no, can't no, no, no. <laughs> I just can't do it. I can never. I mean, ice ice barrel is the only cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and you can just stand up and dry off and drink. Some coffee. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're good. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. cold for me. No, you're right, man. I, I could not do the yeah, cold. If anything, I want to move south, like towards like Titusville, Mims, Oak Hill area, just because. Like, I, I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, okay, well, that place is crazy. But I was like, yeah, but it's peaceful. Yeah, yeah. It's peaceful, and it's only 15 to 20 minutes away from the beach. It's I'm only right. right there. I'm 10, 15 minutes away it's from like Flatland. It's like anywhere in life. Or 20 minutes away from the inlet. So it's like, that's Oak Hill's only crazy if you involve yourself with the crazy people. With the yeah, crazy people. Yeah. Like, yeah. everywhere you go. If, like, if you're looking for crazy, you're you'll find, find it. it. <laughs> right? find it <laughs> that's like anywhere. I yeah. mean, anywhere on the planet. It's yes, well, it's like I was telling him that I was like, when I first like kind of met you, mm. but like in, inadvertently, yep. we had played pool here at Merck's. Yeah. And then I'm on my little like spiral journey post divorce, and me and my boys, I'm like, I'm going to Costa Rica for two weeks. Okay. And I was eating that little that burger joint okay. right there in the heart of Hako. Okay. I'm on the front porch, and I look over, and I see you walking down the street. And I'm like, motherfucker! <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? And like, I tried to catch your attention, but you were walking. Then I remember I texted you the next morning. I'm like, bro, are you in Costa Rica? Uh, okay. We didn't even know each other. You're like, yeah, bro. I'm like, where's the restaurants at? What the fuck? This is crazy, <laughs> no dude. Way. Wow. What it, restaurant was it? Do you remember? Oh, all right. You know the, you know the crazy yeah. nightclub bar? Of course. Straight across from that, like if you're walking back out to the main road. Okay. Like, all right, that road, and then it's just to the right. There's like a little front deck area. Okay. Um, good burgers. Right across the street is the 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 Mexican style, like best corn tortillas I've ever had in my entire fucking life at that joint. Okay. Um, I wonder if it's like Mary's Diner. Um, oh God, I wish I have a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of us, I'll, I'll look it up later. But yeah, no, okay. I have a picture of us at that restaurant. Okay. Because yeah. then you, and then when I hit you up, you recommended another restaurant, dude. Anyway, I could go on for it. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Sure I'm very can. familiar with Hako. Yeah. <laughs> I was just there for two yeah, months. Right, dude? Um, more like three or four. I but, say, yeah. how many months a year do you spend out there? Well, I mean, that was uh, uh, amazing. Tika took me down there. Uh, the Costa okay. Rican woman yeah. took me down there. This, uh, uh, I met her, actually met her last October. Uh, spent about two weeks with her, just getting to know her, being, you know, her friends and Knew there was something there, but I, I was like, I can never do long distance. You know, I was yeah, like, how no, in the world no, can this yeah. work? You know, and as much as I wanted to, but I was just so I left and um, <clears throat> kind of put it behind me, and and then I ended up uh, taking a group down there, a group of some of my friends down to Pavona's this past July, and when I came back, uh, we were staying in Hermosa the night before we were supposed to come back here. And so I, I had dinner with a friend in Hako that night before we were supposed to leave. And then this uh, um, woman, uh, her name is Ada. She hit me up. She's like, hey, I see you're in town. Um, love to connect before you leave. And so I just, I don't know. I felt led. I was able to, to stay a little bit longer. That's incredible. And uh, so I felt led to just stick around. And um, and it was like around my birthday. And, you know, so I was like, you know what? I don't have to be back. So I'm just going to. I almost did the nice. same thing, though. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. My friends were leaving and I was like, I think I'm going to stay. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I'd, I'd met the same thing. I mean, not. Probably not as genuine as you, but I met a girl down there. Yep. And, and I was like, she, she's like, yeah, I got a place. You know, I'm like, shit. Right. I don't got to go <laughs> yeah. back to work for a month and a half. Why the exactly. fuck do I leave? Exactly. Yeah. That's when you can make that choice. I, I know. Start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Another it, week. And the first time I saw her, first <laughs> totally. time I saw her most of breaking, I was like, oh my God. Yep. Cool. And for me, like here, I haven't ventured much. It looks like a black sand Bethune. Mm. You quickly learn that it's not. No. No, it's not even close. Oh, my <laughs> like, gosh. That's a death wave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen so many faces of that place. 
Um, I mean, I started going back there uh, to Costa Rica in the mid nineties. Oh, wow. So this is way back in the day. This is when Hako was like, there was a little dirt road down the middle of it. There was like a few couple restaurants and the best Western. And that was about wow, you it. Seen, so you've seen like a complete transformation. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even the same it's like a little place. mini Vegas now. Yeah. Or like yeah, a yeah, wannabe yeah. central. American I call it, or, yeah, it's like the Daytona beach of <laughs> Costa Rica, right? I is mean, it really, is it really that developed? Oh, oh my, my God. There's like high I rises, think, yeah. like a bunch of them, you know, right. and it's, I mean. So it's like so, a city city. I oh, rented, yeah. I rented a oh, five no bedroom penthouse on the beach for like a hundred bucks. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just because I'd never splurged on anything like that before. Right. That's really for a cut. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean, if you walk into this place, you got a pool table. It, it was nuts. Right. It feels like, yeah. I mean, it's. I had a masseuse come to, like, I got a massage on the balcony. Now, not a happy ending, just a massage. <laughs> <laughs> on the balcony of a beach in Costa Rica. I was like, what? I'm, I look up, I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, what is going on? Yeah. Yep. I don't ever want to leave. Yeah, no. It's, it's a special place. I mean, not. Town is uh, unfortunately known for prostitution yes. and a lot of drugs and yeah, some, hard, a lot of you know some crime and things and so I've got to see that firsthand um, you know over the past year or so. But any, any scary uh, experiences through, through the years? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it actually wasn't there, but I will say. I mean, this pastime even, um, and I don't. You know, it, it's like anywhere. Let right, me tell yeah. you, like. Yeah. I mean, we could be here in New Smyrna yep. and some crazy. Well, they say we live in the most dangerous country in the world. Right, right, right. And Florida, <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> per capita make... has some of the craziest people on the planet <laughs> yeah. in our state, a hundred percent. I mean, <laughs> Australia, we, we know this. United States, bro. <laughs> Everything's trying to kill us, especially the, the, the people. Hashtag Florida man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'll oh take something right there. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, you know, I tell people, I mean, like I said earlier, if you want to find crazy, you're going to find yeah. it. And oh, yeah. it's just, you know, right right place, right time, or wrong place, wrong time. You know, it, it can happen exactly. anywhere. anywhere. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that. Actually, that's a good story. Uh, I'll try and get through it as quick as I can. Yeah, good. This is your but time. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is a good one, though. Um, so we, we went up to, it was Santa Teresa. I believe this happened in Santa Teresa, Mao Pais area. And um, I was actually supposed to go up there on this trip. We, we went a few different places, but on this trip in particular, I was supposed to go up there and meet with a guy that I was talking to. He had property there and we were talking about maybe doing some kind of some nonprofit work, things okay, like that. Very cool. And uh, he had a nice, you know, big chunk of property right on the beach and a, a place there. And so my goal was I had a few friends with me. I had my uh, my ex-wife, I had my friend, his wife, and one other friend. So there's five of us total. And so I think we went from, uh, we might have been in Hermosa or something. So we went from there and we went up to stay. We were only going to be there like a night or so. We weren't going to be there that long. And then we we're going to go up to Tamarindo. So we get to Santa Teresa and it was at night. We And we were just scrounging, trying to find a hotel to stay at. Found a place up the mountain to stay, a real nice place. And the manager of the hotel was super cool. Uh, he's like, all right, you know, I'll take you guys to the spot the next morning. Um, it was low season, so there wasn't many people in town at all. Mm. Real laid back. I mean, it's a small town anyway. Yeah. So I was like, you know, this would be great. Yeah. Easy in, easy out, no big deal, you know. And um, so we wake up the next morning. <clears throat> he takes us to the main break, and it was absolutely firing. I mean, like perfect like perfect florida better than that you yeah know? i mean yeah. just like four to six foot and Everything just is so going dangerous. all the way to the beach you know like yeah. five turns to the beach i mean uh. it was like perfection in costa rica pretty much you know <laughs> yeah. as a florida surfer everything you would ask for yeah. so in paradise so so we're surfing and um it was literally just me my two buddies and the guy from the hotel and that was it there was nobody around and we're just sharing perfect waves, you know. <laughs> and we're just—I'm just like, okay, life is good, you Thank know. Thank you, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my ex was on the beach, and my buddy's wife was on the beach, and so um, life was good, man. I mean, you really don't can't get much better than that. Yeah. And uh, so we're surfing for—it wasn't even that long. It was probably 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And all of a sudden, I was paddling for a wave, and I see this guy, like, I didn't even see him paddle out, nothing. I see him uh, challenging me for the wave, you okay. know, like paddle battling me. And I'm just like, 
didn't really think a lot of it, you know, but I was like, it's kind of weird, you know, but obviously I'll get up and maybe, you know, he'll back off, whatever. Well, I get up as a right, get up and start going down the line. And this dude just keeps coming. He's not having it. And I'm like, what, like, what is, you know, like really? And, uh, and so we ended up, I remember I, I was a little cocky about it, mm-hmm. but it, I was just like, really bro? So I kind of like, not, I think I might've hit his rail and then I just kind of like fell into his legs basically just to be like, come yeah, on bro. bro. Like, yeah, yeah like you oh, knew no. what you're doing. Like, yeah, there's, there's, like, there's a million yeah. waves out here and the fact that yeah. you, you know, so. You started this, don't be mad at me for the Yeah, outcome, yeah, 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 <laughs> so just, to, yeah. So I was like, well, maybe he'll understand after we both just, you know, blow the wave and, you know, he'll, he'll kind of go down and find his own peak. Well, so we come up and so it's this little Tico guy that he's like going ballistic and come to find out this dude is like the local drug lord Uh in town. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. And who knows what else he does, but, um, he was, and he was definitely on something, you know, like high on some crack or who knows what. And so he comes up and then like, you know, broken English, Spanish, he first, he like, he's going off and then he grabs his board like in the water and he's picking it up and he's like throwing what? it like overhead, like chucking it at my head. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like this dodging. Is, this is happening right now. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what? Damn. He was, he was pissed. Yo, yeah, no, he was outraged that, you know, I would take his wave, you know. That's, so, uh, you know, I quickly figured out, I was like, well, this, this dude is just, nuts i'm just gonna try to diffuse the situation as best i can and be done with it so i i finally you know after three or four chucks towards my head he kept picking oh yeah yeah he kept throwing man (laughs) i was just like dude this guy i mean this guy was nuts like he was like i said he was definitely high on something like There yeah. wasn't any rationalizing with him because that's know? not easy to do. No, exactly. Like, like, like you're treading, treading water, water, picking a board yeah. up yeah. and throwing it. But he was good at it. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, he had done this. He had practiced yeah, this many times, times before. <laughs> sure. To, yeah. Oh, so I finally I get on my board and just like I'm just like I'm out of here. So power out to one of my buddies, and my buddy, you know, my buddy Chris. He obviously saw kind of what had happened. And then so I get to him, we're kind of facing this guy. He's piling back out, still like just chirping away, you know. And f- we're just like, okay, like this is your ocean, your beach. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. all you, man, how, yeah. how, how about it? And so, so we're kind of diffusing. He's finally kind of chill. And then my other, our other buddy who was down the beach, <laughs> he thought he would be like the hero so, oh, yeah, so he paddles <laughs> over. We all got one of them. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you fucked with my friend. He, he paddles over Hell and yeah. starts going off on this guy, and I'm like, no, like, don't. <laughs> but I mean, it was just too late, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, th- so this guy, you know, our buddy Justin, you know, he's starting, and we're just like. Like leave him alone, let him go. Shout out, and Justin, so, fucking warrior loyalty. Right all there, dude. We call so his nickname was Yonker. His, okay. his last name was Yonker, but we just called so it was Justin Yonker. We called him Yonker. He's shout out to Yonker yeah, for but. trying to save the day, but he <laughs> he made it a lot worse on, <laughs> on us and himself, <laughs> mainly himself. Okay, and um, so so he starts in on the guy. The guy like basically turns back around, comes right at him, you know, and. Just like, all right, let's go. <laughs> so literally, the guy gets off his board, does the exact same so thing, the board, picks guys, it up. The board. <laughs> so this is his move, dude. <laughs> first, yeah. first chuck. Oh no! Took like a chunk of the rail out of my buddy's board of Justin's oh. board. Yeah, like literally, I remember it was first try. Like just like I'm like, oh gosh, here we go. Yep. You know, it's on now. Yeah, it's game on. And I mean, Justin had no idea what he was getting himself into, obviously. <laughs> Justin, this guy's throwing surfboards, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, luckily it hit his board and not yeah. his face or anything, you know. Yeah. But um, so anyway, so so then the dude, I mean, he's just again enraged, and he basically looks at us and he and he literally said, I'm gonna go in and get a gun and kill you. Oh like literally those are the words that came out of his mouth. So and- like Death threats, you know. It's not funny anymore now. It's, right, you know, right. You're like, like holy big shit. fucking problem. Yeah. Yeah. In Central America, we got huge problems. For sure. And this guy was obviously crazy. So, I mean, we weren't doubting, you know, yeah. that he was 
So we kind of like, so, and he starts paddling in. We we're kind of looking at each other like, oh my God, yeah. this is, this shit this is has gotten real. Yeah. Like, what are we going to do? So we're kind of like talking, figuring it out. You know, our girls' wives are in on the beach and we're just like, this is, yeah, this is not good. People are not around. I think by that time, the manager of the hotel, I can't remember if he was still out or not, but he basically told us, he's like, I know who this guy is. He is crazy. He will try to kill. I mean, he's yeah. nuts. We like he leave. does this stuff right now, often. Bro. So, um, I think he left, which the crazy dude, no, no, the, oh, the manager. The manager. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think it. he kind of scooted out of there cause he knew shit was about to go down. He probably didn't want to be any part of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, so basically, so the guy's name, uh, or he had a nickname. It was El Toro. Oh God. <laughs> the, bull. the bull yeah and and the funny thing is God. he was like he was probably like five six you know? <laughs> right. like, right. when you explain the story i'm yeah. picturing it in my head and he was five yeah. six. little tico he guy but Napoleon just syndrome. a madman yeah. and um so he goes in we see him like come oh. around so basically what he did he rounded up some of his boys and oh. and then he's like waving a stick on the beach mm. like yelling you know this and meanwhile, like our wives are starting to fi like figure out there's something going on. Um, and somebody actually told my ex like what was going on. Now, this guy's crazy. You might want to go he get help. So she actually drove into town looking for help. Yeah. Um, so this is going, I mean, it, it was escalated just, yeah, quickly. Shit is going down. Dude. <laughs> it was it like, escalated very quickly. I told you it's, it's like something out of a movie. It's like wild west in Costa Rica. It's it pretty nuts. And so, so the guys that he got uh, actually started paddling out into the lineup. Uh -oh. And so me and Chris, we had actually started paddling down the beach. We we're like, maybe we can paddle like a mile down, you know, yeah, and like dude. get away from this situation. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, Justin didn't follow us. And so the guys came out and basically surrounded him. Oh, no. And so we're looking back like, oh my gosh, like what is going to happen? Yeah. Poor, poor Justin, like what do we do? Um, but it's like, what can you do? Yeah, you know, at we, that point, you're out of your control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you really only got one choice at that point. Yeah, fight or get away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're kind of keeping an eye. Go rescue Justin and then beat up Justin for putting that situation. <laughs> right, right. So they basically surrounded him. We're pushing him in kind of like probably hitting on him a little bit, but like pushed him into the shore uh -huh. where El Toro was waiting oh, with the God. stick, <laughs> with the, just... waving the stick, you know? Tell me he threw the stick because he's throwing Well, he's eventually throwing he did, I'm sure. <laughs> but so they get Justin in, immediately they, I think El Toro like grabbed his board, takes it up on the beach and they like destroyed the board like right mm -hmm. there in front of him. That was like the sacrifice, you okay. know? And so while I guess they were destroying the board, Justin was like, well, this is my chance. So he ran. He's books. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that was smart. Yeah. So, and by that time we were actually uh, down the beach um, and we had gone, gotten into the beach, you know? Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay, well, at least Justin didn't get killed. Like, and he mm -hmm. basically was trying to catch up with us. So mm -hmm. we run into town, um, up the road. I ended up hiding in some cabinas down the way. And Justin, he kept, I mean, we kind of all got separated, which was weird, but, um, and you know, I'm just like praying for these guys, like hopefully everything works out, but how are we going to get, you know, connect again? Yeah. At this point, is your ex-wife still in town looking for help? So, yeah. So th this is where it gets better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is where, yeah, it's just like, yeah, you, need to, you need to talk, contact your screenwriter. We're going to, yeah, I was yeah, about to say, yeah, we're going to write a script. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is a story. Is yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so I'm, I hide in the cabinas. I ended up being fine. I'm, I'm peeking around the corner and I see all El Toro and his boys, you know, run up the, the road and so onto the main road and like run to chase us. But I knew, you know, I had a feeling that's what they were going to do. So they just kept running. So Justin ended up, he ended up jumping on the back of this lady's four wheeler and she ended up being like the local like doctor in town. What is happening? <laughs> True story. She 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 runs him into town. Later on, we find out that they ended up like screwing her, her four wheeler out because they found out like she, yeah, helped, she or helped something. Out the enemy yeah. Kind of thing. yeah. So oh, shit. that's kind of crazy. 
meanwhile, my ex-wife, she goes to like all these restaurants and things and is saying like, I want to call the cops. Like, you know, is there any police presence around here? Like, help me out. Nobody wanted to help her because they knew this guy. They knew about the situation. Nobody wanted to help her. She finally did, I think, find one place. She called. Not to cut you off, but as as he can attest to it, I'm not going to go into any detail because I don't want any governmental problems. But, like, if I'm looking for help in Costa Rica, all I'm saying is, from what I saw, I ain't going to the cops. Right. That's all I'm this saying. Is true. That's all I'm going to say. Seems, yeah, yeah, it Very seems like true. El Toro is well connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he, he's known around town. It's like, well, oh, we don't want to help. We want nothing to do with that. Yeah. They're, we, more, they're more or less security guards for hire. Yeah. Right, right. We found out there, I mean, there's no police uh, presence within, like, it was like, 15, 20 minutes away. I mean, it was not in town, basically. No. So, this is early 2000s? Or <clears throat> this was 2006. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So this is back oh, on, sure. yeah. This is a little while ago. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So it was even worse than when I saw it, I'm sure. <clears throat> oh, yeah. It was like, mm-hmm. all that goes, okay. Yep. So, okay, so my ex, she actually, this is where it gets a little crazy. She went to a restaurant, and she was talking to him, uh, trying to get help. So <laughs> by that time, El Toro and the boys come into the restaurant that just, Eric swipes in. Yes. Oh. Jeez. Just, I mean, by chance. And she tells me this later, obviously. They come in and they ended up getting knives from the restaurant. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, I'm not joking you. This is all <laughs> true. Shit. 100% true. And so she's like, oh my God. And she she's from, was from Puerto Rico, so she knew Spanish. So she actually, and they kind of ran out. She got in the car, kind of went and pulled up next to a couple of them. And was trying to like reason with them a little bit, and yeah. they were just like, "Well, El Toro's crazy." How did and... they stay angry this long? Like, well, I it's almost it's almost maybe the fear of what El Toro will do if they don't act upon the situation, maybe or something like that. Yeah, who knows? You know, who I don't knows? know what goes in the uh... mind of a madman is it will make you mad yourself. Like <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I think he just felt like he ran the show there right well it's like i mean it seems like he did i remember when i was (laughs) back then it's like some super inflated version of local aggro you know right oh we had a couple agros like that at the end oh i mean i've seen it yeah Yeah. i'll beep this out (laughs) 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 which actually i just saw him a couple weeks ago how's he doing i haven't seen that guy in like he's he's doing good yeah i mean he's in i think he's staying in estorios but i saw him in haka a couple times still surfing a bunch Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah he's still bleep this part about, but I almost got just Jasper almost murdered me at the end of it. Oh, in his young Jasper, yeah, yeah. Uh, was, I remember was, Jasper. Yeah, I mean, he's since we're cool. Yeah, yep. I remember it was one of those days, you know, young fucking, and he's just oh yeah, it was mine. Oh yeah, yeah. oh man. Girl, so you take you funny. like you said, you had drugs, complete <clears throat> isolation, right. and like right. he's got the Superman complex and Napoleon on top of that. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, a yeah. cocktail of fucking crazy right there. Man. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Sorry. So they got the fucking knives. They're coming to kill you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess. I mean, and so again, you know, my ex she stopped hunt. them. You know, it was like pleading with them, and then they're just like, "Oh, is she, is crazy." Oh, a local to Costa Rica, or is she a she's, white woman? She's from Puerto Rico. Okay, so yeah, she's Spanish. Sorry, so right, right, right. I'm picturing so like this least... white lady pulling up to a Costa Rican gang, like, "Please, guys, yeah, don't murder." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. No, I mean, at least she tried, but yeah. maybe calm down. I don't know. How but... many hours later before you guys were like? Okay, we can breathe now. So, gosh, I, I mean, it's it, not done yet. It, it, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so they, I mean, luckily, I never saw them again. Okay, that's um, good. I hit out. So basically, what ended up happening, um, the, you know, everybody got back to the hotel other than me, and the manager was there, and he knew what was going on. Everybody explained it to him, and then he told them though, and he told us. Um, they finally came and figured out where I was, picked me up. Yeah. Anyway, he we go back and he's like, you guys need to leave. Like, yeah. do not stay here. This guy's crazy. He will come in. Like, you can't stay at my hotel for yeah. sure. Yeah. So basically, Jeez. we packed up and like 30 minutes later, we were out of town. Yeah. <laughs> so and on our way to Tamarindo. The safest, so, safest bet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, like yeah. that's... So it I was mean, a... It's crazy. He even didn't want the liability. He kicked you Exactly. Out. He's well, like, I'm sorry, guys. I... But it's it's so like I I I'm not nowhere near to the level of your story, but it's it's how quickly that can come on. Like when I was in Costa, just, they got we we went fishing, landed a couple bull mahis, okay. and we got a little Airbnb, just a little one, and we're 
My buddy gets a giant bottle of Jack Daniels. So me and him take this thing to the head. Okay. And his his girl is a real instigator. Okay. So she's like, oh, let's let's take Kyle to the casino place. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. You know, was this in Hako? Or? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Uh-huh, that oh, one. Boy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's do that. This casino comes out, come to find out. I, I'm not playing any of these games because, like, they got blackjack, which isn't blackjack. They got roulette and these slots. Yeah. So I end up at the bar. And okay. I'm like, man, there's a lot of ladies in here. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long story short, at some point, I ended up in the hood in a in the hotel employee's car because they left. No they way. went back to the Airbnb. Right. So, like, I, I'm in this blackout rage, that, like, weird, you know, yeah. things are happening. Not knowing right. where Things are happening. And Hako is... Oh, yeah. Hako is Hako. Sketchville. So, like, yeah. I, like, come to, and I'm in the hood, and I'm looking around, I'm like, uh-oh. This is not good. Yeah. Like, yeah. I am not supposed to be here. I'm like, bro, where are we? He's like, it's okay. It's okay. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> I'm not feeling like it's okay right <laughs> No, now. it's not. Like, are, it's you, okay. are you about to murder me right now? <laughs> yeah. like, it's okay. It's okay. It turns out they were all the nicest. Like, I just got lucky. Like, they were all the nicest people in the world. But right, right. Like, how quickly. Oh, yeah. The, the, the script can flip. Oh, man. And that's why I tell you, like, you got to be careful. It's They're beautiful traveling destinations, but like, yep. especially as like an American traveling. I'm yeah. Sure, anyway, you just yeah. got to be, like you said, just right. be aware. Yeah, right, right, right. Now, it's crazy yeah. for you guys because you guys were like brought there by a local. Just try, not, you're not drunk. I you're mean, not raising, you're just four There was three nothing dudes saying on. that something crazy was going to happen. No, today. dude. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, it shouldn't have gone wrong, no. but it did. Yeah, it was wrong place, wrong time. I mean, yeah, yeah, there you so, go. But it's it's a story, and obviously I'll never forget it. And uh, <laughs> but it's just like I said. I mean that stuff. I mean, hopefully you know, we pe- see this, the Matt Dayton story on like a movie. <laughs> I know, right? Like, pretty, like, yeah, no, based I'm, on true events. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That's up. that's probably my my craziest try. I've had a few, you know, run-ins like Puerto Rico. I've had mm-hmm. a, a, quite a few. Really? Yeah, I'll tell you. Actually, I'll, I'll tell you a good one just because it. Um, there's a couple uh, local guys from here that I was with. Um, Jeff Thomas, JT Surfboards. Mm-hmm. So he was with me and John Brooks. And uh, <clears throat> we were on a trip together in Puerto Rico. And um, we were out surfing like Maria's or something one day. And uh, I think JT, he dropped in and like a Grom either dropped in on him or <clears throat> I think that was the case. I don't even think. But anyway, the ground was like, it's my way, blah, blah, blah. You know, and he was like little local kid. Mm-hmm. But and he went, started going off on JT, and he just wouldn't shut up for like 30 minutes, though. And JT, I mean, JT's cool as a cucumber, but he started getting annoyed. Yeah, he's just like, dude, point. shut like, up. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I just remember that going on for like 30 minutes, and I was like, yeah, just a kid, like, paddle down the beach kind of thing. Yeah. You're having PTSD over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> this, like, this bro, post, like. You're looking at the beach. Like, Toro or like pre El yeah. Toro? Oh, this is no. This was in like 2016. Okay, like so this is way after. So you, yeah, you got yeah, this yeah. handled. You're like, All right, uh, yeah, calm yeah, down. yeah. Nothing is gonna <laughs> yeah, ever top down, El Toro, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah. So the next morning, though, we get up and we went to Domes, which is right down the beach uh, okay. from there. And we were there like some of the first guys there. We saw a couple locals start coming into the lineup, and uh, and then sure enough, that kid shows up. Oh god. And he goes and basically alerts. Rallies the locals. All, yeah, all the locals like, hey, that guy, you know, I had an issue with him. So the locals come, and I've surfed domes many, many, many times. Is and, this in and, relativity and, of like Rincon? Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. It's, it's in Rincon. Yep, okay. exactly. Um, domes is a super fun spot. Mostly oh, yeah. a right, sometimes some lefts. Uh, but... Anyway, so these these local guys get you know wind of, of the, there had been an altercation with uh, JT and this kid, and they came over basically and surrounded JT, and one of them ended up like open hand like smacking him in the head, and just like humiliated. Him it's t- yeah, him. and JT yeah. is I mean I know him well. He's one of the nicest guys I know, but like. He's not one to back down from a fight yeah, either. Exactly. Like, so he, he told me like he's like it took every bit of me not to just start swinging. Well, because in that situation, you gotta be wise. Like, yeah, yeah. I heard this yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. You gotta the pick other your day. battles at that point. I heard this thing the other day. It blew my mind. Uh, Andrew Tate said it. It was the prison is the prison and the cemetery are full of ego. Hmm. I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. That, that's deep. Because oh, in that is. situation, there's no win in that. Like, no, you no, yeah, no. you can hold your pride if you want. Right, right. But there's a good chance. 
you oh, yeah. might not live. Yeah. Well, no, the beauty hey. of it is, let's say you beat everybody up. Right. Now you're not welcome back. Oh. And so, like, why or would you, you want like that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah. now you're in Puerto Rican prison. Battles. Yeah. yeah exactly. Right, right. Like, it ain't worth it. it. Yeah, there's no scenario at the end of this, <sighs> you yeah. fighting. Unless, awesome. unless, unfortunately, like I said, uh, unless... You know, if they're if they're trying to kill you, you all right, motherfucker. You got no choice. You better let the you let the dog yeah. out. Yeah, let the dog yeah, out because yeah, you yeah. gotta get out. And like your boy did, all right? Run like a motherfucker as yeah. soon as you can. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, anyway, I mean, we made it out of that that scenario, but um, you know, I'll, I'll say it like I'm not a fan of surfing in Puerto Rico anymore. Like, like in general. Yeah, I mean, I I was actually there um this past year uh for a contest, uh, the Eco Pro contest. I was, I've been helping out with that okay. for the past mm-hmm. year or so. And um just the 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 surf culture, the vibe there now is like they don't want gringos there. Do you think mm-hmm. it's fueled or by outside. all these Silicon Valley nut sacks that are buying up all the land and like isolating the beaches and such? We had a conversation about be. this yeah. where like, you know, it's not like normal Americans that are going down there that just want to surf, mm-hmm. and she got like you know Jake, you got the Pauls. Well, and, they're doing it and because all the, of the taxes. They're, they're buying, yeah, because so, they go yeah, there. Yeah, it's like it's huge tax exemptions yeah, for them to go down right. there because it's just a territory of the U.S. Yep. But they're buying massive sums of land no, and then right. telling the locals you can't come on this beach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I would yeah. fucking Paul hate you too. Did that. They, uh, okay. they put a mansion on the oh, beach. Oh, there's it's not just the locals. Right, right. There's thousands of them. I see. That's messed up. Yeah, I'd be fucking furious too. Right. Did that happen at the inlet? Well, grown. Up, yeah, grown I mean, up fishing. You'd have freaking like, a riot. Right, one hundred percent. Well, grown up fishing here. We used to, you know, a big thing I used to do because, like, you know, all we had was a canoe. Mm-hmm. So I would knock on doors on Riverside, right, and, and be like, "Hey, do, would you mind if I launched my canoe in front of your house?" Okay. And, and the, it, every time they were a dick because mm-hmm. there was plenty of them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, "No, you can't." That's my river. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. What the fuck did you just say? Yeah. Right, right. Like, obviously, people? I didn't drop the F-bomb or nothing because I'm on their property. But like, yeah. then I tried to explain to these people, like, you know this is just a courtesy, right? Well, you know like, You only own up to a certain point. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, you well, can't. You know, you know that's happening with the docks. So oh, yeah. I got yelled at for fishing on a dock. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they think they own well, the like, water. Yeah, I'm like, on they my They literally think motor. they bought the water. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm on my boat. Oh, with the trolling motor just fishing under these docks and this dude walks out he's like hey man you can't you're not allowed to fish here really and i go says who i yeah, go yeah, yeah. since when yeah i'm like i've been doing this my entire life yeah, <laughs> what are you talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like he's like no man it's like all these mansions down the <clears throat> hill and there's a mansion down there right now okay i bought like two and a half three acres or maybe four acres and he literally the house is as big as the acreage what fucking incredible dude. oh my god you've seen that it's one insane. that's going into the cape oh. does anybody know like does Batman live there? Where like, is you're going down into the Cape, like you're about to go down, like you're going for uh, parking lot five or something like okay. that. Okay. You know what I mean? And but like you're just getting past the how, like you're almost to uh, what is that tuna? The last road on the left, that little break with the poles. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then on the right, there's this fucking one story mansion that you can only see for a second through the trees. Yeah. But it's like, it's like this. It's on. There's a peninsula that goes out, and the house is just. It's kind of like that. It's out and it's all in the water. It looks so sick. I is haven't it, seen that yet. Yeah, I think I know. Is that the one? Uh, it's uh, it the in the river. One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the, the right. Is it the white one? one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Dude. So dude. my funny enough, um, that house is dreamy, dude. dude. I think <laughs> a little much for me, but dope. <laughs> yeah, I think a buddy of mine that I went to school with back in the day, his his uh, family owned that. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Was, I think his name was like Shannon or something. But um, yeah, and I remember that house. Such a prime insane. spot. Yeah, dude, I see Go it because I go out, you know, going fishing or whatever, and I see that house. I'm like, <clears throat> if I was going to splurge just yeah. irresponsibly, that right. would probably be me. You got surfing really on like this it, side, though. fishing on this side. Yeah, like, yeah, the dude yeah. can Perfect. fish from his bedroom window. That's fucking <laughs> yeah. right, right. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, pretty dope, Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've, the older I get, the less I. I mean, obviously, I, there was a time in my life where you know, one of the high end pasta rockets in the mansions, and the yeah. older I get, the less. I all land. I see is you spent uh, you spent a whole ton of money to live really close to somebody else. Like, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> Come yeah, on. I want land, man. That's the only. That's the only, after living on uh, five acres on Cow Creek. Yep. Like I need to leave because it's it's my father in law's property and I eventually I'm married blah, blah blah and I gotta get my own house but right, right. it hurts to think that I might move into something you know yep. that's like right cookie next to cutter each other and whatnot you're like ah yeah that yeah, space yeah. is just that's second priceless for sure yeah. so are yeah. you uh, are you still surfing competitively <clears throat> yeah it, a little or is bit it just free surfer all the way 
No, I mean, uh, like I've been involved, like I said, with the Eco Pro yeah, Surf well, Series. Yeah, you're coordinating or, or still Yeah, coaches. yeah, I'm doing like some judging with them, uh, doing some announcing, and nice. then you know they're like, hey, if you want to surf some heats, like go yeah. for it, you know. So yeah, I'm still getting out there. A Did little you bit. grow up in the competitive aspect of surfing heavy or? Was uh, it- not too much. I I started competing more when I got to college, actually. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Before yeah. the college? Yeah, I went. Oh, to- sick. So I actually started a surf team at Palm Beach Atlantic College. No way. Down in West Palm. Yep. So uh, <clears throat> they had no surf where team. where is that? That's Palm in Beach. West Palm West Beach. Ball, West, West Palm, Palm Beach. Beach. Okay, yep, sorry. yep. So it was just right across. I mean, it was basically on the intercoastal, right across from Palm Beach, the exclusive, mm-hmm. you know, most expensive island yeah, yeah, on yeah, the yeah. planet. So is there a good breakdown in West Palm? Oh, yeah. I mean, Reef Road. Reef Road. Okay. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows, Sorry, I'm, I'm, yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. knows Reef Road. I mean, legendary. Right. Yeah, that, legendary. You know, I mean, that, I, I do feel really fortunate because. I'm going to get made of fun of. Well, <laughs> well, no, a lot we'll of put, locals. We'll put, up, we'll put up a clip of that Chris Ward pump house. Session yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Well, I mean, dude, that was Hurricane like Sandy. That was it. That was it. The infamous. I was in RCs for that fucking swell. Yep. I met God that day. Right? Oh, I went down, and the first time I ever was. Took off on a, a good left because RC's was firing on the mm-hmm. left side. I mean, every, every surfer knows exactly what I'm talking oh, yeah. about. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I took off on this left, and I look up, and I just I have a house of water. Oh, just yeah. Just to close out, I'm like, oh, this is bad. <clears throat> so I dove as deep as I could. You know, that's the instinct. Yep. Didn't do shit. <laughs> just <laughs> rolled your ass to the beach. I've <laughs> never felt power like that. Oh, yeah. And it got to the point where, like, I didn't take a proper breath. I wasn't. Mm-hmm truly prepared for the situation i was in yeah and i got to a point where i was like oh this is it yeah dude that was me really like, wow, yeah. and, and i was just at, at one point i was like because i didn't know which way was up i didn't know where my leash was i didn't know yep. what anything was yeah i was like this is how i go and i was okay with it yeah. like, i truly was i was like i was like surfing i can i can live with that you know yeah you know, i'm gonna die happy and in that moment huh. where i gave up is is it is right when the wave let me go kind of release it yeah. <laughs> and i was like I come up laughing and smiling, and then sure as fuck, one right on the head behind it. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was me during Idalia in the inlet, man. I had a scare like that where I I was paddling out, lost mm. my breath paddling out. Yeah. Again, I haven't surfed in so long. Yep. Go out there, and I catch a wave. I fall. I have this really big uh, crone and this really fat, thick, freaking longboard looking board. Okay. Shouldn't have been surfing with that board. Yep. And, dude, I got so pounded, and all of a sudden, everybody sees me. I'm sitting down on the freaking on the on the stairs at the end, like just no, watching yeah. everyone surf, just going, "Yep, yeah. <laughs> I suck." Couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. So how were you guys? The What's that? Team. The college team. You, you, did you build like a lot of clout earlier? Yeah, or? I mean, it, I mean, we surf with um, like all you know, UCF had a great team. I mean, the Jacksonville. So um, during the NSSA, NSSA. Yeah, stuff? exactly. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so it was just you know the experience of like getting a, a group of guys together and going that that team format, which is really That's cool. That's got to be pretty you know? rad, dude. And yeah. I, I actually have always enjoyed that more, you know. And really, surf contests in general, I, I like. I've never been a big contest guy mm-hmm. um, in terms of like my surfing. Honestly, isn't really suited for surfing. Like I would rather go do like get a lot of speed and go do like one really critical maneuver and make that maneuver beautiful yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah then then go and try to do three wiggles to the beach you know yeah, yeah, you got yeah. kelly slater and Don- <clears throat> and you got donovan yeah you know what I mean? now don't get me wrong donovan's is a murderer but he's got that free flow spirit yeah, yeah. right yeah, right, right. Machado. yeah, yeah Machado. Rob, Rob, Rob. yeah if you're gonna do like it like dave kelly, rostovich Rob. you know Yo, he's another God. guy i love dave, dave um <laughs> You know, Whatever so, happened to that guy? He just disappeared from the. Yeah, from the yeah. Face I of think the earth. he's it like surprise me in this New Zealand, way. like in the back country. Probably like, surfing yeah. perfect waves every day. Oh yeah, yeah. That guy's such a legend. So yeah, sick. yeah. So I, I love like guys like that. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously the competitive stuff's great to watch, and um, you know it's exciting. It's sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun, sure. and, and I get into. I like. I enjoy watching it for sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, as far as like me personally competing, like. Uh, you know, it's it's like I'll do it, but I I do it more for the joy of bringing like the surf community together. Yeah, yeah. it's like you being know? in the moment. You feel it, like you were saying, like they're like, hey, you want to run a heat? You look right. around and you're like, fuck yeah, let's do this. Yeah, I'll yeah, go. yeah. Fun. But I, I don't. I try not to get like, like my competitive spirit like get the best of me like if right. i if i win i'm stoked but if i lose i'm like it's you, all good you know yeah, 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 do you yeah. think like do you think that's because like you're naturally competitive and you're afraid that'll take away from the joy and love <clears throat> of surfing 
Yeah, or, or I mean, just, you just, or just never like really vibed with you at all. I I just because um, I know a lot. I of think people. that's not the reason that I got into okay. surfing. You know? Right. It's like it was it was always more of like an outlet for me. Yes. Whereas competitive surfing is really not that it much of an outlet. A, yeah. Like yeah. It, It'd be very stressful. It's a very job, quick. Yeah. right? It's exactly. A job. Yeah. Exactly. You, know, you got a job to do, and you better mm-hmm. do the job, or you're gonna feel bad. Well, yeah. And that you have like your this uh, constricted time limit, you know. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, okay, the chance that the ocean is gonna throw you yeah. the best way, of where you know the other guy, it's yeah. gonna. So it's like, I think that's the thing about it. It's like. It really, it's not going to tell you the best surfer unless everybody has the same platform. Right. So, and that's where I think wave pools will could, and are changing change, the game. Change the game. When, well, yeah, it can be a very even, yeah, yeah like even competition is insane. You're going to get the, if you get the same platform every time. It's going to breed, there's going to be a war among surfers. Because you're going to have what they call, you know, then there's going to be like, oh, natural surfers and technical com- you right, know I mean? right. well, We're breeding a whole <laughs> yeah, new, yeah. new well, genre this might, right here. Yeah, this might make me sound like a purist or whatnot, but that's the thing I told you we were talking about earlier. It's like surfing and skateboarding were like the only sports where you can go do with your friends without having to compete with each other. Right, right. You can just go surf or go skate. Yep. Now that's going to add a whole another Actually, atmosphere and a whole another yeah, dynamic yeah. to the to, to the whole experience. But, you know? 100%. Fast forward 10, 20 years, like if you have the same rampy wave over and over, mm-hmm. like imagine, it's already mind-blowing. Uh, yeah, like like watching what these insanity. guys are doing. Now, yeah, dude, it's like, yeah. what the fuck, it's man? Yeah. I just like hitting the lip or getting a big carving. I'm happy. Right, these right. motherfuckers are just yeah. taking it to a whole... I mean, oh, yeah. Like, bath, like back flips are yes, becoming dude. like a normal thing now. Like, I remember when Gorkin did the Gorkin flip here and everybody's like, what did you just do, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was ahead of his time yeah. at that Yo, point. Yo, dude, insane big time. Time. Yeah. Shout out big Gorkin. Time. He's doing good things now. I heard yeah, you man. telling me his shaping's the going school, well. Yeah. Living, Got shaping bait shaping nice. down in uh, Nicaragua. Yeah. Is it Nicaragua, I think? Is, is yeah, he's yeah. He's at the yeah, boom down there. Yeah, exactly. Chinkletus. I did see that clip. He was growing big time. Just bombs. What was it, like a month ago or something? Yeah, you see that one? Yeah, spat out. Yeah, yeah, it's like a perfect A-frame barrel, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah, he's living the dream down there for Hell sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so um, what else do we want to talk about? So I got, you know, I got a couple of things I definitely. Like I to wanted know to mention. Personally. Sorry, sorry, no, no, sorry no, to go cut ahead, you off. Go ahead. Uh, board riders. Do you are you connected with the board riders? That's something really cool. That yeah, I, I was always as curious far as bringing the myself. community over. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Together and, <clears throat> I have not gotten. I think I did like one contest with them, but. Again, I just, um, just I just mad. haven't been real yeah. hyped on the whole, and I do like the team format part right. of that. You know, yeah, you what know, is like the back. format? Like I noticed it's it's like a kind of free. It seems like a free for all. Whoever wants to join it. I mean, obviously like skilled surfers yeah. and locals, but like, is it kind of like? Um, all right, you know how baseball and softball have like you know you got your beer league. Right, and like right. how adults can still keep that competitive <clears throat> fire alive. Yeah. Is that what they're? Is that pretty what much what it is? In? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, kind of what it is. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, Bring the locals. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it gives them that fire. You like know? Red I Dog did. Surf Shop has his team, and yeah, like, right, right, right. other people have their teams. Yeah, oh, is that like, how it rolls? It's like yeah. Well, it's it's like local age yeah, division. That's rowdy. So they yeah. basically get a different. So they'll get like four teenagers, four that are in their twenties, four people in their thirties, forty. So like that, and then so the, the, you compete against other people's age divisions from yeah. different areas okay. of the, of the That's coast. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, like Daytona That's has right. one, and like <clears throat> Fowler oh, yeah. has one. Fucking we shout have out one. NSB board riders. Let's take them all. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah, Pretty yeah, cool, yeah. Man. And yeah. I mean, NSB is obviously oh, yeah, stacked. Cool. <laughs> yeah, team, you know? So we've been doing well. I know that. But um, again, I think the second one that I was gonna do, um, and I was like. I had, I think I had a, a, some work or something and I ended up not being able to make the second one. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and then I was just like, I'm just not yeah. into, you know, it's well, like, it sucks I, when you show up to an area like that, to, to a, a, a competition like that. And all of a sudden you look at the waves and oh, totally. it's minimal and you're like <clears throat> trying to get into it. I call it's it not even a thing. The contest curse, yeah. you know, for, especially in Florida. I mean, yeah. it's like uh, growing up with Caleb and Liam and all these, you know, my, my, my friends from high school, that's kind of how we met was at the NSSA no guy. contest. Yep. Leon Johnson was the coordinator, which is Caleb's dad and Jeremy's yeah, dad. Of course. And so he was like my second dad. Without him, I wouldn't be playing bass. He's the one that put uh, the bass okay. in my hands. Very cool. And so that's kind of how I, I, I experienced that. But, dude, it was it yep. was horrible. 
I remember like Eric Templeton, Liam, uh, yeah. Liam Micklebrank, and Caleb were like winning everything okay. every time. Right, right. And you're right. just like you would just show up and you're like, okay, let's, yeah, we let's know go make gonna... fourth, fifth, and sixth, yeah. or tenth. You know what I mean? Because those guys are always going to be winning. That's <laughs> right. Oh it yeah, was so annoying. So yeah. coming up, you know, uh, did you have any mentors that, like early on, and like or to this day that really like helped shape you into into the man you you know you became? Yeah, you know, especially like you know you're. To go for, I didn't know you're from Orlando. That's pretty wild. You know? Right, I, right. I just assumed with your skill set and the way you live your life, yep. it seems like a very localized thing. Yeah, like, yeah. Is there anybody out there that kind of steered it, or was it always driven like self motivated? Yeah, you know, I mean, so my dad. I mean, my adoptive dad. Um, yeah, I mean, he was definitely a huge influence. Like, um, we, I'd say we weren't like super close, but he always was a uh, uh, you know man of faith like very consistent, like just looking at his life and how he conducted himself. And then, you know, he did motivate me within sports, oh, yeah. um, like every sport, even surfing, you know, he's like, you know, try it out. Like, cause he, he surfed actually in, in Vietnam. What? So, yeah. Like, so that's awesome. Yeah, man. So, and he was an athlete growing up. Um, that's awesome. and so he introduced me to every sport so I kind of tried to play everything. I mean, I played mm-hmm. a lot of sports growing up and just tried to get kind of good at, and, at every one of them, you yeah. know, just to feel it out. And um, yeah, the ones that ended up really sticking were like basketball. I actually played a ton of basketball, basketball, even, you know, into my later years. Um, mm-hmm. And fast fact, um, I was actually able to dunk a basketball when I was 40 years old. What? Yeah. What was yeah, your vertical? Dude. Yeah. Dude, I, you're not that tall. I know, <laughs> but I, I that was one thing That's I worked impressive. on. Oh, yeah. I worked on it for a long time. And obviously, Jordan uh, was my hero, yeah. you know, growing up yeah, and yeah. still to this day. Like, Jordan and, and Slater, you know, they were always, like, the best. I mean, obviously, the best yeah, of the yeah. best. Well, it's amazing so. to grow up during that era and have, like, those guys totally. dominating. It's yep. just so inspiring. Yeah. And one word you said about, you, you know, your adopted father, he was consistent. And that's right. that's a very, that's something to look, when you're looking up to, it's yep. something very important to have around you. Yeah, absolutely. And it kind of, yep. it kind of shows on your, on the way you carry yourself and the way you do your things. You're, you're a very consistent person. Well, thanks, man. Yes. I appreciate that. Yeah. So I have a lot, uh, I owe him a lot for that. No doubt. Um, so that's, I mean, he was a huge influence on me. And then, I mean, he surrounded himself with some incredible individuals as well. Um, mm-hmm. you know, he did some, uh, he basically was kind of like a financial advisor and created like a financial ministry, teaching people how to, handle their money wisely um, and specifically through the Bible and what the Bible has to say about money, okay. uh, which it has a lot That's to a say. That's a way and, to connect to people. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, really cool. like how your relationship with money and God have so much to do with one another. Um, so yeah, I mean, just how you spend your money, where your heart's at. Respect. Uh, the right. Integrity. Uh, yep. Tom Hardy says, you know, you know, it's like respect and noble intent is really all we can do. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. If you follow those two, yeah, it'll get you through. You know, that'll yeah, yeah. give you the foundations to carry a, a good day. Right. Yeah, intention, yeah. intentions, everything in, mm-hmm. in life, man. It is. Yeah, yeah. it really yeah. is. Kind of where your heart's at with mm-hmm. things. So yeah, so I'm, I mean, my dad, and then you know, obviously, I, I've tried to um, just put myself around good people in general. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it's and always like, like you think from day one, your your father instilled that in you to where you were able to. That's amazing. Well, he did that well, so yeah, I obviously yeah, yeah. kind of wanted to follow in exactly, his footsteps. Yeah. And I think that's so, so important for a young man to have, you know, oh, like man. at a young because I, I like I didn't get my first. I mean, I had like my uncle who would yeah. come in and kind of chime in, but I got my first healthy role model, my father. Okay, you know, when I was about fourteen. Okay, and everything changes. Yeah, you know, when a young man has that um, guidance, we love to ask this question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> If there's anybody out there that, that really resonated with your story, you know, like obviously you've been adopted, you just, you know, God just blessed you with the ability to get the, the full story, which is probably a question you've had for right, right. decades. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if there's anybody out there that resonated with everything you've said and, and maybe they're struggling, mm-hmm. maybe they're trying to figure it out or whatever, like, you know, like, is there any, is there like things you've always told yourself that, you know, you think gave you an edge or, or like a sharper 
what yeah, what advice? What yeah, advice like, would you, you give the rituals, young rituals? Rituals that you've done, like a daily ritual or something, yeah. like something they could do to take away in their day. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's what we're, we're we really want to do here. Somebody that connected with Matt Dayton. And made right, like, right. Wow, dude. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. thing that's resonated with me is you you surround yourself with good people. That's mm-hmm. strong. And that is something so that's, so important. I think important. that's one of the biggest yeah. moves so you can important. make. So important. Yeah. But is, yeah, if there's anything you got to tell, say to that young man or woman that's really feeling what you're saying. Yeah, I mean. Um, I think, you know, there's a couple things I would say, and we talked about this a little bit, uh, before we started, but, um, you know, and some of the motivational stuff that you hear all the time, but there's a lot of truth in that, uh, really when you go through those dark seasons and those storms of life, I mean, those are the times that is going to build you, mold you, strengthen you, you as a person, uh, your character more than any other time in life, hundred percent. And, and I think as humans, we always try to, um, we want to avoid, you know, going through tough times yeah. and, mm-hmm. and feeling pain and dealing with sorrow and struggles. But ultimately, I mean, that is going to make you into the best possible you, you can be, you know? Mm-hmm. And so to embrace those, I mean, I think I said, it might've been you, but I saw one today, um, you know, with, with Kobe actually, and oh, he, yeah, he, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what he said. He's yep. like, embrace the struggles and the storms, you know, because that's where it's at. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's where, if you want to become a, a man, a real man, like that's where you're going to find it. Yeah. You diamonds, know? diamonds aren't created without pressure. So that's right. So, that's right. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think that's a big one. Um, and I'll, I'll share a little bit of my story uh, if we yeah. got no, time. No, we got, oh, no, we got, we got all the time in the world. world. Yeah, Just, yeah, we don't, yeah. We don't cut off good conversation. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And um, and then I, I'd say the other one uh, for me, um, so I think I shared, I uh, great Christian parents that uh, loved the Lord and, um, you know, was uh, very vocal about having a relationship with God, relationship with your creator. And I know that looks different for a lot of people, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I don't, I am not a person to beat anybody over the head with a no, Bible no. or anything like that. Um, I personally, um, you know, I believe the Bible, the word of God and what it has mm-hmm. to say. And I think there's a lot of things for me personally that I can take from that and that help strengthen me on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably not, you know, not in it as much as I want to be. I've been working on that more lately. Um, and I see the difference when I am consistent with that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, um, but I will say, um, some of the, the toughest season of my life, um, it was probably about two or three years ago. And when I was going through it, there was a lot of things I didn't know what was going on. And so there was, uh, just a lot of uncertainty, you know, about like, where is this situation going? Like, it's crazy. But <clears throat> I chose to get, draw really close to God during that time. Yeah. And I chose to go to him, like, you know, when you're sitting in your car and you're just like, Do you, what the hell? If I can ask this, because I'm really, I yeah. feel exactly. Was it like an active choice of yours or, or did something, was there like a big coincidence where maybe the universe was talking to you and it was just undeniable? Like, or, or like you just knew instinctively and this is just yeah, for me. Like yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, I think it, it was instinctively because I think when we are at a place of, of like hopelessness or like such uncertainty in our lives that it's like, where do you go? You know, like who you go to you look around. Yeah. I mean, nice. and, the, and then some, sometimes there's nobody yeah. to go to. Nobody's going to save you. Nobody's going to help you. Like you're on your own. It's a beautiful and, moment, mm-hmm. isn't it though? Yeah. And, it can be. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a scary in moment hindsight. sometimes for hindsight, some people, yeah. but, um, and I mean, even, even lately, I, I mean, there's been, been some moments, um, that I've had like that. And, and I keep kind of, I just have to go back to that. Like, cause I mean, we're born here naked by ourselves. Right. And that's how we're going to be though. I mean, yep. there's not always going to be mommy, daddy, your best oh, yeah. boy, your wife, 
nobody's gonna save you you know it's like you're on this earth on your own and you gotta figure it out as you go Mm -hmm. Uh, but you do have your creator Mm -hmm. uh who put you here for a reason and um and and that's what i do believe that there's a huge connection Mm -hmm. with our creator you know And, and i think he desires to have a connection with us so um I'm a big believer in that. <clears throat> and again, everybody's got their different idea of God right, and right. what that looks like, who it is. I think that's it. the beautiful part, really, in my right. opinion. I love, like, right. like to me, um, it, it it's not, it's a king and queen. Yeah. Because when I pray during the day mm. and when I pray at night, it's two different energies that I feel. Now, it could be my mm. own interpretation. And again, this is just my yeah. opinion. I'm right. not trying to break into the theology. Right. Yeah, but yeah. to me, I, I like to imagine that my king and creator has a very, very powerful woman hmm. standing next to him. Yeah. yeah. You know? And, okay. and that's, that's my beautiful thing. And I, I love that everybody can interpret that love right, right. from the universe and our creator differently. Yeah. It's one of my favorite parts of religion. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, like, yeah. if you look at history, a lot of the greatest rulers and emperors in the world have yeah. always had a yeah. even greater woman. Maybe not. You know? I think... Maybe Marcus Aurelius was probably the only one. <laughs> okay. I just got done reading Meditations. If you've never read it, okay. I highly recommend it. Okay. It's like the story and philosophies of Marcus Aurelius or Aurelius huh. for the... Yeah, yeah. But, dude, this guy was next level. Really? You know, basically running the world, right, at the time. You know, Roman Emperor, <clears throat> yep. when Rome was Rome. Right, right, and right. he had the most... I mean, everybody knows... Most people that, like, know that they're they're going to, like... are probably going to botch it. Mm. Um, but one of the... I mean, he did. He said, and first of all, we gotta read the book. But he had somebody on his staff. Now remember, this is like Trump times a million. Right. You right. know, like, <laughs> like as arrogant as it gets. So. Well, no, no, just, just powerful. Okay, like like okay. when Trump was like standing on the stage, you know, that's okay, a okay. confident man running the most powerful military in the world. Right. Right. So right. like that kind of power, but back before bombs and guns and such, okay. he had somebody's. Their only role in his staff was to lean in, especially in moments of heightened intensity and emotion his okay. job was to lean in and say you're just a man okay that was his only job okay was to like find that moment where he might become egotistical and and knock him down a peg uh, yeah. okay like what yeah. well, a lot of the philosophies from Aurelius are very logical too he, he had a very logical way of seeing the world mm. and a lot of those famous quotes that he has you know that i've Oh, that yeah. I've seen, and it's just very logical. But I guess you know. I love. He also his, had his other side. Oh, his, his interpretation. Emperor side. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. His ruler side. His interpretation of God and, and his respect for the gods. If it answered one of the greatest questions in my life, which uh, I hated myself most of my life. Mm. Um, neither here nor there. That's a story from another time. But the part of my journey to come out of this last season was learning how to love myself. Mm. You know, if I ever want to truly love other people, I had to learn love myself. Right. Right. So I started loving the right people actively. You know, okay. it's part of my journey of, of sending these positive messages to the right people or calling my family or calling my best friends who I consider brothers every week. Mm. Yeah. You know, I love you. I mm. appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good week. Yeah. Marcus Aurelius believed that all energy is one mm. and your, our souls are shared and, and the more connection you build, we're literally just an extension of each other. Okay. So, when you look, when I looked at it that way, it was like, um, now I get because what was happening over a month of this active, like daily active practice of showing love in the right places, mm-hmm. you know, not showing love to the wrong people. Yeah, I was like, in turn, I'm going to the gym, I'm doing the ice bath, I'm I'm making the right decisions. Yeah, and I'm liking the man in the mirror, not physically. I mean, physically yeah. too, but you know what I mean. Like yeah, I can yeah. feel my soul, and I love myself, and I'm proud, and I'm like, what is happening? Right, like right, I don't right. care about myself for the first time in my life. Yeah, like like I'm not going to work to get money so I can be rich. I'm going to work to get money so I can spread wealth to my nephews and, mm-hmm. and I can build an empire for my family. Hmm. And and it's it, Marcus Aurelius is, you know, this guy lived you know, a couple thousand years ago. Yeah. And, and he answered my question. Yeah. Uh, written word and spoken word. That's magic, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah well, like that, not to take it too far off your topic where yeah. we're talking about it, but yeah, that inspired some real shit you just said right there. But mm-hmm. Nice. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you, you know, you're saying the connection to your connection to God, you know, has been very, very important in all of this. Yeah. Even yeah. In the darkest moments. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's where it, uh, the reality of it, like, um, I mean, I, you know, I had a great 
parent, my adoptive parents, you know, are incredible people. Um, uh, my dad's still alive. He, he actually just turned 80 and, wow. uh, yeah, Amazing. yeah. And, uh, my mom, um, who raised me, unfortunately she passed away in 2017. That, yeah. Yeah. And she, she was just an incredible woman. Um, just love people so well and just a servant's heart. Like, um, you know, everybody that came into our house, like they felt that, you know, love, love and that mm -hmm. servant's heart, like, and, uh, you know, like at her celebration of life, um, I mean, there was a lot of people there, Dude, man, from so all powerful. over mm -hmm. and it was at Northland church in Longwood, which is a huge church. And, um, just to see the amount of people that came to like celebrate her life was like humbling right but, but not surprising you yeah, know yeah, because yeah. like she was just an amazing inspiring human being yeah, yeah and and just what a blessing mm -hmm. to have her as my mom you know yeah, like man, that's incredible. the one that god chose you know for yeah. me um and now you know being able to reconnect with my biological mom has been really cool too you know so have i've you know that's a like that's a special kind of gift too you know like you know i, I had a father and neither here nor there but then i got a father so like yeah, god yeah. loved me enough to give me two right right you know like and and that's got to be a special feeling where like you know you got this disconnect you get this amazing woman yeah who was your mother right and now you got you, you and you've had you know you got two moms yeah, you yeah double yeah. the love because like crazy. there's a special connection there like i heard uh saying uh a son is a mother's last unconditional true love hmm. and a mother is a man's first true love true yeah, yeah, yeah unconditional so ever mm -hmm. everlasting so. yep yeah man that's so true yeah I'm, i mean there's nothing like a mother's love right no, yeah. i no, mean just uncomparable if, you, if you've got a good one yes you know it's like it's just uncomparable. Mm -hmm. And to anybody that out there that was just hurt by that statement, doesn't have a mom, you call me. My mom's got some love to share. <laughs> right, right. And you're respectful. That's right. I'm down for the family to get bigger. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But, um, yeah, man. yeah um, you know, maybe I can share just a little bit of uh, oh, please. kind of the, um, the darkest, you know, season and storm. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you being um, honest about it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so... So I lived, I went from Longwood, went to uh, Palm Beach Atlanta College, uh, went through college. And then when I, I moved back to Orlando, because I actually uh, had a bad knee, I blew my knee out wakeboarding. I got into wakeboarding back in the day, back when it was like still, first hitting in oh, Orlando so you, and everybody was are ancient, like everything's still growing. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a cool time to, uh, I was like when it, you know, it all started and blew up in Orlando and I got to a, a friend of mine, Andy Lazarus, um, shout out to Andy. Uh, I may actually go over and cruise over to his place in Orlando tonight. Nice. I guess. Yeah. He's a yeah, good, good friend of mine, but, um, you know, he was our boy down in South Florida and he introduced us to like all the pro riders cause he was oh, a pro. And, uh, so, um, you know, this is back like Scott Byerly and uh, Darren Shapiro. They were, you know, the OGs, like OGs kind of the, the goats of okay. wakeboarding, you know? Yeah. And so was uh, it born in Florida? Like, pretty all, much. Like, masterminded kind of, yeah. in here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even, in, even in Port Orange, there was a big scene in the early 2000s. I mean, it makes wakeboarding sense. Wakeboarding and wake never, skating too. Really yep. Yeah. Like, yeah. That wake skating. Whole deal. Yeah. It's and, crazy. but it, it was, uh, probably... Yeah, like mid '90s is when it really started blowing up, mm -hmm. and um, Scott was kind of like he was the free rider that didn't necessarily love the contest and everything, but I consider Scott Byerly the goat, the goat of wakeboarding. Like yep. he had the best style. I talked to Andy about this recently, but the, the, you watch this guy and wakeboarding is like it's kind of like watching a lot of the guys look the exact same, you know, kind of doing the same stuff. I'm There's not, not a lot of style in it for a lot of people, but this dude just had like the smooth, it was like the Rob Machado kind of okay. like mm -hmm. flow, you know, with a, with a sport that didn't have a lot of flow sometimes, you know? Right, it right. does seem very, cause I mean, I, I try, it seems very like, it's a very abrupt force thing. Like when that right. dude goes up there and it starts helicoptering, like, yeah. it's not like flow, bro. Right, you are, you right. are throwing some shit down. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. respect, dude. It's like a <laughs> gymnast, you know, yes. on, yeah. behind a boat. Is what <laughs> yeah, that's what exactly what like. it is. And, so how different can it look? Yeah. But Scott like, was the guy, man, that just had this like, whoosh, like everything flowed, the fluid. grabs, like it just all looked super easy, you know? Yeah. And, and, um, so 
Yeah, we we always looked up to Scott, um, and he went to Lyman High School, so that was kind of okay. cool. We lived like real close, and um, so I'll never forget like the day Andy had me over um, at our buddy Christian's place in West Palm, and uh, it was a private lake my buddy had, and and Scott and the boys came over, and um, I was just like, oh my gosh, Yo, like, what that, I'm gonna get to watch this dude with my own life, eyes man. behind the boat. You know, and it was, yeah, a moment I, I took some video with, like, one of the old handy cams, you know. <laughs> big and, VHS uh, in there. And <laughs> shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so that was a moment I'll never forget. Um, and I got to ride with a lot of the top guys, you know, over, That's like, cool, those few man. years, which was really cool. Yeah. But um, but ended up, yeah, I mean, I got into it and loved it and was trying to, you know, push myself uh, a little bit. And uh, my buddy ended up, <clears throat> we actually came back to Orlando. There's a big wakeboard worlds contest it was like the big contest at the end of the year at altamont springs right there by the mall and that morning before the contest we went and rode lake brantley and my buddy had this like old aeronautic it was like a 76 or something and this thing threw like a massive weight because of the way it was designed it was just different and um so my buddy we used to do like do double ups, you know, where you like go mm -hmm. back around and you meet the wake and it makes these. So it just, and so you hit it just right and it just throws you like straight up in the air, <laughs> like 10 feet <laughs> up, you know, and that then you awesome. do whatever, you, you know, you can try a, a flip, whatever. And so I hit one and I mean, I went like higher than I've ever gone, you know, <laughs> and so I was like, you know, early 20s and I was just like, let's go, let's do yeah. another one, you know. So. He literally threw me like the biggest, it, I think it was a triple up actually. He did some crazy angle with the boat, came back and I hit this thing and I swear, I mean, I was probably like 15 feet up, like, cr like crazy. I'd never uh. been that high on a wakeboard and I tried a tantrum, which is kind of like you hit it and then you do a backflip and come around and I came around and I still had like 10 feet to go, oh, so you know, yeah, I was still over, right? just like. Uh -oh. Holy. So I'm like rolling down the windows, you know, trying to hang on. I'm like, I really wanted to land it, you know, and uh, I love the that. Boat I've was... never heard that terminology, so I'm going to cut you like, rolling down the windows. Oh, so yeah, I yeah. I was like, I had a ways to go, you know, so, but I was like, I remember like, I really want to stick this thing. And uh, so unfortunately, when I landed, my weight kind of got thrown forward a little bit and I landed like stiff leg like oh like hyper extended yeah already? and oh, it that's... ended up hyper extending went back and out to the uh... side like, and if i think about it hard enough like it's one of those like feelings you're like you're it just grosses yeah, you out to think that you're you know your leg can bend like a way it's not supposed to yeah, <laughs> yeah like it can <laughs> and and with wakeboarding you're in those boots yeah. so there's not you're not yeah. falling oh, you know yeah, no, and taking over. the pressure off so mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I blew my knee out really badly yeah. um, and basically, like, blew all the cartilage out. And I, the doctor said I um, shredded my ACL. Mm -hmm. um, That's never a good word. No, no, right? nah, not at all. That's yeah. a horrible word. <laughs> my doctor shredded. Yeah. <laughs> and so hey, I was going to knee doctors trying to figure out. What and year I, was this? This was, gosh, probably 90, I think it was like 98. 798 ish okay. right just now. getting like perspective of where we were in mm -hmm. surgical and modern medicine yeah so. yeah 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 um and luckily uh jewett orthopedic um they were like kind of some of the best in orlando still are and they work on all the magic yeah, orlando magic shoulders. guys yep and um at the time yep um there was uh so i went to two doctors before that they wanted to do like full reconstruction on my acl all that and uh, my dad was going to the, these appointments, and I was just like, and that was a gnarly surgery back then. Like they I had to, yeah, even nowadays, slice your whole knee nowadays open. It's big, but I can't imagine. That yeah, yeah, it was a big deal back then. So, so I opted to go to a third doctor at Jewett, and uh, his name was Doctor Barnett, and um, great doctor. My my dad had actually had surgery with him before a knee surgery, um, and so ended up. He said, he's like, well, listen. Are you laid up at this time? Oh, yeah. Like crutching? Yeah, 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 like gimping around yeah, okay. for, for like a couple months for sure. I think I it was like two, maybe even three months so before I ended up getting so, as an Oh, it was guy, like one of the worst times you, of my okay. life for sure. 
Um, yeah, I think I like just broke up with my girl, college oh, yeah. sweetheart. Yeah, and let's just pour the salt on there. Dude, right? it was it was a rough I time for right, sure. So trying to heal up or trying to get surgery and then heal up. And uh, anyway, so I ended up, he, he's like, well, let's not do the whole reconstruction. Let's just clean everything up real good. And he's like, it's not, you're not unstable. So let's see how it goes. And maybe you'll be fine. Scar tissue, you know, build up and you won't have to have the ACL, ACL reconstructed. So I was okay. like, all right, well, let's go for that. That sounds yeah. like a good plan. So we did that. And I ended up, you know, that surgery went well. Um, I was fine. I rehabilitated pretty well. And um, I did end up, uh, like, I don't know, probably a year later, I had a Baker cyst that kept filling up on the back of my knee, which when you have inflammation, it's this cyst, everybody's got one, uh -huh. that will fill up with fluid. Okay. And um, and it mine just kept filling up, you know, from this being... this is like totally, like having that cyst is totally natural? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, or is that what swelling is? Well, it would, it goes to this area. Okay. And... Yeah, everybody's got a kind of got one, um, and basically they ended up removing it. So oh. they took the cyst out, went in, and okay. took that out. So anyway, yeah. that was uh, that was it. I mean, it was better after that. I mean, I've always had some knee issue, like just that this yeah. knee has never been so as did good. Did they repair the ACL? They didn't. They didn't have to. I mean, so it basically, you like, just don't have an ACL. No, I do have one. It's just it's compromised. You know, it's it's not but it's still attached. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Exactly. Like scar tissues built up. Oh, okay, all right. So, so kind of the body, the human body is an amazing thing. Sorry. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So that was uh, my my most significant injury for sure, yeah. and um, you know, dealt with that. Like it's crazy how the body will. You know, it becomes imbalanced and yeah. everything else. My back, lower back was affected for a long time. Uh, a man who's probably been active for the last every day of your life. Yeah. And yep. now you can't fucking move. Yeah, you know, man. People are helping you go to the bathroom do that. And that alone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a humbling experience yeah. for sure. That how, was... how long was the recovery? Like from where, where you're not like, you're not wakeboarding again. You're not surfing again, but you're like. All yeah. Right, all right, I'm mad again. Hey, right, 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 right. What's the road? How are we going to do this? Yeah, I mean, the recovery wasn't too bad. It was probably like two months, okay. maybe two, yeah. maybe three. But I, I remember just I couldn't wait to surf again. You know, that was the thing. I was like, screw this wakeboarding. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, I'm like, keep I don't, my feet out of bind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just wanted to surf, you know. I do remember my first surf. Um, I remember I had like an eerie fish nice. uh, with a blue Classic airbrush. Twin um no it's kind of like a little bit okay. more high performance fish yep. you know and uh, i'll never forget i think uh, my first surf was at like flagler avenue at the nice. end there <laughs> and i was like i'm back like, yeah. thank, <laughs> like thank you lord you know i, I do remember that surf for Not sure getting out of the water i don't care <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so yeah injuries um for me injuries have been uh it feels like a time like everybody as an athlete everybody hates yeah. injuries obviously but um it's kind of like always a time for me where uh it's almost like god kind of like st stops you a little bit in your tracks and sometimes we need that because we're just going a million miles an hour and, and sometimes we're like missing things and um, maybe need to reset in life and sometimes like He's like, it's time. Like you yeah. need to, you need to slow down, chill out, I'm and about to teach you something, and you ain't gonna like it. Yeah, I'm yeah. How strong you are. That's crazy. To so, hear. I've never heard that perspective. Man. Yep. So yeah. that's how I've always dealt with injuries, man. Like the initial, obviously, you're just like, oh, this. Does that sucks. take you? Like, did you find yourself after the? Did that take you to like a darker mental place than you're usually used to because you didn't have the physical outlet anymore, or were you able to in your isolation? Yeah. Just keep this positive mentality that you obviously had, you know, really driving you. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I think that's where it, like that's where your mental is battles test, happen is and then right, by right. And you don't yeah. have your outlets anymore and, Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I did have a buddy at that time. Um I want to say I think he needed a place to stay for whatever reason at that time. Mm -hmm. And so my parents actually let him stay at our place. And he's still a friend of mine to this day. Uh, his name's Jay Young. He's a good childhood buddy of mine. And so he kind of stayed with me as I was recovering. So that actually helped because we yeah, were kind of yeah, like yeah. boys. Company, and we're, yeah. So, yeah, so that was cool. I'll never forget that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, sometimes we just, again, we just need to 
slow down, you know, yep. and, and kind of reevaluate our life, the direction we're going in. And, um, and I'd say even right now, I mean, I'd say I'm, I'm a little bit in one of those, uh, phases. Yeah. 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 I mean, like I, I t- talked to you about, you know, with kind of my career and mm-hmm. where the th- that things, you know, where things are going there. Um, so, and, and sometimes it's just good for us to be solo and on our own and, and kind of in our own head and to have to figure things out. I think it's the most mm-hmm. important. I know, I know this last, what I call the great spiral, you know, cause it, it, it wrecked me to the foundations. Right. Cause it, right. it proved that my foundations, my entire life were faulty. Yeah. So I, you know, through love, I, I call it love, loyalty, and laughter hmm. or in God, those four things, those, that's the foundation. Okay. And then peace. Yep. And prosperity is the walls and the roof. Okay. You know, but you got to build it on a good foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it, it's in that it was in a great moment of isolation mm-hmm. and, and struggle and fear and worry. Yeah. And then finally somewhere in there, I found me. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I, I got this quote that I heard today where it's like, when, when you embrace that and yeah. you find a way, it, it becomes... It's like now that I have God and love and loyalty on my side, it's like bring it on, motherfucker. What do you got? Right. right you know, right. like try to take me out. You, yeah. You can try. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like in those moments of you know when you're comfortable all the time and kind of doing the same thing day in and day out, like you're not you're not gonna grow in those mm-hmm. seasons, right? Complacency and, is a killer. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Exactly. It's those times when you do have to struggle and grind and like okay, what's next? You know, how am I going to make this happen? You know, like that's when you find out who you really are, you know? So, um, yeah. And that's, you know, that's something, uh, I guess I'll kind of, um, transition into, uh, the next story. I'll I'll go into try and make this, uh, keep it in a nutshell as much as possible, (laughs) but, um, there's no nutshell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got a a couple questions that'll tie it up. Like if you got to get going, you let us know. Okay. Um, but yeah, but yeah no, that's no. not where we are. We're here. pushing up on seven thirty, so okay. Well, yeah, I mean, we had one with my mentor and best friend Adam the other day, run three and a half hours. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, we're on your time, brother. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's an honor for us, for the for you know, because you know, we're asking you to tell your story. Right. Yeah. Thanks for opening up. World. Exactly. All yeah. we can hope is that we're we 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 create a space for it to come out in the most healthy and positive way. Yep. So that they right can can enjoy it yeah, yeah. You know, that's so no if you if you want to tell it yeah man. this is this is our like i said this isn't the last time we're gonna have you on yeah and, and i guarantee you the next time we're gonna hear about you know that we're i can't wait to hear progress the end of this right, right you know right. you're saying you're going through some shit i can't yeah. wait to hear how matt dayton beat it right right, so, right. but yeah, yeah. No, if you got a story let's hear it brother yeah, it's, yeah. it's an honor i am okay. gonna go i'm gonna go rock a fan yeah. you guys keep going okay go for it, go for it. yeah yeah cool cool <laughs> Um, yeah, if we can grab maybe some water or just oh, yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. dude, or, yeah, no. that'd be awesome, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's killer. Appreciate it, brother. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, man. Well, let me, uh, transition into, so we, yeah, we basically, we lived in Sanford for many years, and that's kind of where I, um, Raise my family, raise my kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got two kids. I've got a, a boy named Landon. Mm-hmm. He's nine, and a girl named Talia, and she's fourteen. Yeah, that's a beautiful name. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's a sweetheart. Um, so uh, blessed to have them, healthy, yeah, happy kids. Um, so yeah, I was in Sanford for gosh, I think we were there about. 16 years or a while uh, and this is we moved to Sanford when it was a little kind of a little bit sleepier town yeah, yeah. and then watched it absolutely explode up, yeah. yeah yeah so um towards the end of those years we were like okay it's it's getting a little big for our taste and um obviously I was coming out here a lot you know to yeah. surf and just kind of get away from it all and um that was kind of the ultimate plan you know is to to come Move out to the here coast. yep yes. yeah, yeah, yeah so a little bit more peace a little bit more oh yeah coastal living yeah yeah i mean uh, as you know things are just different out here oh, the yeah. pace and a little bit slower yes the mindset mm-hmm. and the traffic i mean all yeah. of it's just uh it's a very it's a very healthy healthy town to to raise a family to if you know I yeah yeah from venezuela in caracas which is a crazy yeah. city okay to you know yeah, moving you to 
fucking very slow. This whole time. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I didn't see it. I was, <laughs> you're hiding it well, man. But yeah, no, man. It's 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 growing up here. It's it's been one of those really incredible experiences and in community and all that. So yeah, I can only yeah. imagine. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that was with the kids. Go honestly with um. That's why I really did want to raise them out here, you know, because I knew it would just be a healthier environment, mm-hmm. you know, for them. And um, you know, I was raised a little bit more in the city and. I was like, man, I don't want my kid. I I want them closer to the coast, you know? And uh, so, yeah, so we moved out here uh, into Venetian Bay. uh, I think it was back in 2019. And so that was like, Dream golf course to golf course, my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was right, right. Exactly. I know. It was kind of crazy how that worked out. Um, But yeah, so it was a dream come true for sure to finally, you know, get out here and especially with the family. but I, you know, uh, sometimes life again, you have no idea or what what's gonna take no, place no and where it's gonna it. go and um, find that dog. Yeah, what kind man. Of lessons is about to throw at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there were some some surprises uh, right around the corner that I just there was no way to predict and see how that was gonna play out. Um, yeah, and basically, um, uh, you know, I ended up I was we were married about 19 years. So wow. it was, it was a, a long run and, um, yeah. And I mean, the plan was, you know, move out here, live happily ever after, yeah. you know, yeah, that's, that, I mean, that that's was the idea, right? That was the game plan. Um, but, um, yeah, life had other, <laughs> other things and ideas and, and, you know, I mean, I, I can look back and say that, I mean, I think, I think it went the way it was supposed it to. It was supposed to, exactly. Um, Didn't yeah. feel like that at first, I bet. Definitely I know, not. I know exactly where you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. That's a dark moment in a man's life. Yeah. On the backside of it. Yeah. I saw this video the other day, and it was it fucking, I, I bawled. I cry a lot now, actually. I'm a hell of a right. Guy. I saw this video, and it was a picture of a guy crying, saying, like, the, the terror of being yeah. newly divorced. And it was mm-hmm. a video of him just bawling his eyes out. And then it, like, quickly cut. To like oh, the, I think tra- a- the travels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is was, that the guy was, in Costa Rica? Maybe, yeah, or yeah, yeah. And yeah. He's like he cuts to like <laughs> the next yep. like two years, and it's just him jumping. Through yeah, the world. yeah, yeah, yeah. I and saw it. You go I'm probably from, on your page. You might, you may I have, you know. And and that was yeah, yeah that's right because you were one of the ones that liked it. Yep. Yeah, we, we talked about this yesterday. Um, it kind of reminded me of myself. Yeah, honestly. no, me too. One hundred percent. I, 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 one hundred percent remember the gut feeling when she walked out that fucking door. Yeah, and I knew she wasn't coming back. Right, right, and right. I felt like I just broke an oath. Yeah, to myself. Right. And, and so, so yeah, no, I, I. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, so. Um, so shout out, fellas, if you're going through it, just. Find the dog and hang on, dude. It gets better. Yeah, yeah. And if and, you got people to reach, reach out to, reach out to people and talk. talk yeah, and well, help. yeah, fine. Holler you know. at one of us. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll instill some of our, uh, hopefully our knowledge and yeah, wisdom. Yeah. Uh, Come paddle out with us. You I'm sure better. I'm sure it'll resonate <laughs> with many people out there. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, and that, you know, that's the sad thing. There's a lot of broken families these days. Mm-hmm. Like, my heart goes out. And a lot of my close friends since then, you know, are, are going through it and mm-hmm. just recently gone through some stuff. So, I mean, it's been good in a way. I've, you know, been able to help a lot of my friends yeah, that are good, uh, good going through it. Yeah. yeah. But, um, anyways, yeah. So, but, um, so yeah, I mean, the plan was, yeah, move out here, be happily ever after, you know, with the kids and the whole thing. And, um, yeah, I mean, basically, um, you know, I think, I think people, we all change, you know, in in seasons of life, you know, and and Mm -hmm. I think our minds change. um, And I think, you know, women, I'm one, they're emotional creatures. Mm -hmm. Two, I think there's a a big change, especially if they don't stay on top of like hormonal levels, Mm -hmm. things like that. And and for all of us, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, but I get what you're saying. And it, in my experience, I went through that. Yeah, it became very easy for her to blame me for a lot of stuff. Right, right. And then once that trains off the tracks, like I can't even have a conversation with. Her. Right, anyway, right. Yeah, yeah. it kind of yeah, it goes from um, you know where you used to want to work on things, you know, talk things through, get to the bottom of it, get stronger through She's it. She's scared, you're scared, and yeah, yeah, to like 
oh, now, you know, don't even want to deal with this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, let's just like either sweep it under the rug or be pissed off and not talk yeah, about up, it man. for a week at a time. And I'm just like, this is no way to live, you yeah. know, like, you know, we're supposed to be. I think that hurts the most, right? When you realize it before it comes. I mean, at least for me, there was, a, I knew. Yeah. I knew oh, it was yeah. coming. Well, and the, and the tough thing, I, I think um, people have no idea how hard it is to raise children together. And that, my heart goes out to you, brother. That's, right, that's, right. And I think that's, um, that's what I would say to anybody, like, thinking about having kids. Like, you better get your shit together and you better make sure your spouse has their shit together. Facts, right? <laughs> Clip that. And her as healthy as you can possibly be before you ever think about bringing a child into this world, you know? Yeah, um, it has to be full. Yeah, yeah, man. And you got to be a team. Like, yeah. that's that's the thing. You got to be a team. Set your fucking feelings aside because what's coming is as real as it gets. Oh, yeah. man, it's so heavy. And I think, um, you know, like, I, I definitely wanted to have at least a child, I mm -hmm. would say. How many do you have? I've got two. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um... So, you know, and there was a little bit of a struggle, I think, uh, even like d making that decision, like, okay, let's go ahead and, you know, but I knew I wanted to have a, a child mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and I think as guys, you know, a lot of times we're, you know, we're a little bit, so we can be selfish and be like, oh, I don't want, you know, a child to take away, you know, from yeah, my life. But, that. you know, Especially I think at a young age, I feel like that, that was definitely me. Right. Like, well, I ain't no kid right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So, but at a certain point, you know, you're like, okay, this would be a pretty cool thing. To have, I would like, love little, to have a little bro that I could... I would love to have a little bro to like hang out with. Right, and surf right. And shit. Yeah, oh, a certain right. a certain point in life, it kind of adds to your life. It doesn't. It doesn't exactly. take away. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. That perspective yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at a certain point, we gotta slow down a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You know, not be uh, as selfish, and we, you know, you want to have like a little mini me and my two nephews legacy. are the light of my life, dude. Yeah. yeah. Everything I do is for them. Yeah. Like, everything, and they're you know they're just nephews, but yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Little Lucas and Jackson, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Shout out to them. Um, but um, so, yeah, I mean, it, there was uh, so it was great. You know, we had had the children, but I think we didn't realize, again, um, how much we needed to be together as a team, you know, to continue raising them. And so there was uh, unfortunately, it was like there was more of a, a it kind of divided us in some areas, you know, and that's I think where uh, some things started kind of going downhill and the just managing our own um, health and, you know, a little bit of like, men, that's where mental health for sure comes into play um, and kind of where you allow yourself to go. And, you know, um, um, you can never, it takes two to tango, yep. you know, so, oh, yeah. yep. um, but, uh, you know, basically ended up, um, uh, you know, we, just continue to go down a pretty dark road in terms of our personal relationship, you know, mm -hmm. in our marriage and, um, ended up, um, you know, getting divorced and, um, you know, there's, there's a lot I, I probably won't go into right now, but no. just a, a lot of stuff, you know, that transpired that, that took me to a pretty dark place, mm -hmm. you know, to where I was, um, you know, obviously on my own and, and even at a point, that, um, you know, I couldn't see my kids for a while and uh, kind of more just... When it gets to that point, it really becomes, you know, I'm angry. sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. Just, that's just not fair, I've known man. darkness, but that's not what I do. Right, yeah, that's, right. It's just yeah. not fair. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, there was a lot of things that went down um, that it just, you know, in my mind, it didn't have to go that way, you know? Mm -hmm. It was like, like, I would never do that to... Yeah. to my spouse or even my yeah. ex or whatever That's it is like much. i couldn't do that to anybody you You're know doing it like, to the kids so right exactly right. yeah so i think that for me was some of the hardest uh things to swallow is like like how can this person that i've been with for so long you know turn their back and literally just kind of like want to be rid of me you know how does, I, hate, how does love become hatred yeah yeah and i it was really difficult for me to understand and try to figure that all out and, and meanwhile just try and like take care of myself yeah. and my mental and physical health you know um 
so and i i think uh, you know for the most part i navigated it pretty well and i will say this is um when i was going through a season of um you know before the divorce and kind of like that last season where i was i was really fighting for the marriage and and saying i knew it was like either we do things to do or not right and 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 yeah like really put our all into this or there's no way it's going to succeed um I know and I'll never have any regrets because I know I did everything in my power, exactly. you know, to try to, to save it. And, and, and really because of you. Yeah, yeah. And, and really, ultimately, I, I drew really close to God during that time. Um, and I can honestly say that's probably the only reason I made it through and was uh, didn't end up in like a mental institution or yeah. something like just literally lose my shit completely. Because, I mean, I, I really did have to, there were, I mean, there was days like I was literally in my closet on my knees, like crying out to God for strength to get through it, yeah. you know. And this this went on for, you know, eight or nine months of my life. Um, yeah. So, and it was right after COVID, you know, oh, so like, oh, I mean, it was, throw that one it was, in there. yeah, yeah. It was kind of like we got through probably the gnarliest part of COVID and then, and then it like really things just hit the fan. And then, um, yeah, there was just like, I think it was probably seven or eight months that I was just like, what is going on? And, but I really had to draw strength from God like that whole yeah. time. And, um, and that's why I'll never forget that that season um, was where I saw God like do what he does for, for us when we, go to him and ask for strength, you know? And, um, so that was, um, really cool, you know, to, to just witness, like, be like, like, man, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, um, and my kids were able to see that too. And like in me, okay. Yeah. Well, you showed, you showed strength. I'm sure a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even just the other night, they absorb things like sponges. So they're always watching and listening. Oh Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, yeah. I mean, even just the other night, I had them um, over to my place. We were hanging out, and was able to just like gave my daughter a super long hug. I think they say like if you hug somebody for like eighteen seconds, it's like does something like incredible, like yes. for but for both people. That's you actually know? been proven, right? Like, right, with like medically, medically proven. Yeah, like, exactly. Actually, like, like dopamine and like oh dopamine. yeah right right yes. kind of exactly thing. yep uh, I fully exactly. believe it yeah mm-hmm. so and i think i told that to her and i was like and yeah I, i've been away for a little bit um as i was telling you guys i've been in costa rica for a bit and uh so you know it was great to see her be around her and she's you know an amazing young lady and i was like I just need to give you a hug, you know, like, a, yeah. I was like, at least 18 seconds. Can we do dad, that? You know? Yeah. And, uh, I'm sure she was like, okay, dad. <laughs> <laughs> but she did it, you know, and That's it was, awesome, it was special for sure. And, oh, um, yeah. and then when I went to drop them off, um, uh, right before they kind of walked up to the house, I, I asked them if I could pray with them, you know? And, um, and it was just, it's just cool to see. Cause, you know, a lot of people think it's like weird to pray or, you know, but it it's becomes just it's foreign. Really, mm-hmm. Right, right. Exactly. exactly. Like it, but when you open up to it, it's this special thing oh. that you'll never forget. Yeah, dude. I'm because it's myself. you, whoever it is, and God like literally coming together and creating this moment. And and I, I do believe, you know, God supernaturally blesses that you oh, yeah. know in a you way like, it. you don't forget that stuff you know even if you don't want to call it god like the creator the universe you yeah feel energy it. Like, whatever you want to call it feel it right like a yeah. physical feeling yes yeah i know exactly 100%. what you're talking when i the first time i prayed with somebody else i was like i even opened my eye i'm like yeah yeah what the fuck was that all right, you know, like, right. What just happened, yeah because you know? yeah. i'd never well, there's like a vibrational mm-hmm. thing that happens yeah when like you a, do it there's something going mm-hmm. on something yeah. you can't explain and that's okay i i one thing i've taken away from my journey with god now is there's things you know and then there's things you know mm-hmm. yes. two very different stories right right you know I like, that. like you can That's you good. know this one from you know intellectual information right and this one you just don't question yeah. right right right. Yep. that's good that's good <laughs> so yeah i mean um 
you know, that season, that's kind of been the season I'm, I guess you could say coming out of. Okay. Um, would that be the one thing that you would say that really carried you through that really dark season is reaching out, reaching out to God? Yeah. Is that yeah. the one advice that you would have to take out? If there's one thing that really sticks out. That's, Especially that's to one. that, because what you just touched on is such a huge thing in this country, like a father being isolated from his children. In yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And then having the level of faith. To get yeah, I mean, and there was, I mean, you know, again, I don't want to, I'm not going to go into like crazy details, no, 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 don't but as much as you want. I was, yes. there was a lot of, I'll say, uh, injustice with the way mm-hmm. things went down. Um, and, you know, people in this town, you know, they even, some of them found out about some of this stuff, like, you know, any small town. Yep. But, oh, yeah. But because a lot of people know me, know kind of my character, that I am consistent, like, mm-hmm. what you see is what you get. Like, you know, a lot of some, some people asked, and I was able to share the story. And, 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 but a lot of people just knew. They're like, okay, like, we know Matt. And he's still that same guy, you know. So there's probably something here that's not right. Right. Even though, you know, we've heard things, he's still People that same guy. Yeah, the story, yeah, the story your patterns giant. too. Right, right, right. You're, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, that was a that was a beautiful thing. It's like n- nobody gave up on me, or mm-hmm. you know, nobody like I didn't get weird vibes from anybody That's at awesome. all. You know, um, and again, it was just a learning experience, man, and that, and a time to grow and get stronger and. I mean, like they say, you know, what doesn't kill you only makes you shy. Did you did you find in that in coming out, especially like for me, what I I, in my mind coming out of the dark, I imagine that at one point I was on a path in my life, and through a series of bad decisions, I ended up isolated on the dark woods off to the right side. Yeah. Um, and reaching out to God, very much like you're talking about, was I feel like was the spark, Mm -hmm. and then I was able to look around at who was standing there. Mm-hmm. and figure out i very quickly made a small inventory i'm like okay you know y'all are my round table of people yeah i, I have nothing to offer you right. i have nothing to offer myself and yeah. for whatever reason you're still here yeah, yeah, yeah um did you did you have did you find strength in in just yourself and god or was there a few like old school like og right, standing right. there going like they can't walk it for you yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We got you bro get right, up right. get up let's yeah. go yeah, a hundred percent. Now, I mean, that was another thing. I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that because there was, um, it was almost like, and this is again, just part of like, you know, God is there because he's putting people mm-hmm. in your path mm-hmm. to protect you, help guide you, give you that motivation, mm-hmm. inspiration, like everything you kind of need to just take, like get to the next day yeah. or get mm-hmm. to the next week or whatever that looks like. And literally, um, there was uh, probably four people, maybe five. Yeah, it's never much. Through that mm-hmm. journey. Down with one hand. Of like, yeah. I of like, I'm at seven. <laughs> seven. Right. Oh, I got it down. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, there probably was more, you know, but, but like, like there was a core yeah, yeah, of yeah. like that's, that's the three or table. four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That like without them, and I mean forever, I'll be indebted to them because of that time that they invested in me. You know, the best part about it, I can already that's answer awesome. it for them. You owe them nothing either. Yeah. Yeah. Those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, those are the motherfuckers we're talking about. Yeah. Like, yeah. You yeah. say, so, like, you People feel indebted. People don't expect anything from me. That right, deep, right, right. I always said they expect nothing but your time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and your loyalty. Yep. That's yeah. it. Yeah. One of the main guys, uh, his name's Jeffrey Steele. It's almost like a, <laughs> something you'd see on a movie. Like a Hollywood. Yeah, like a yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood. <laughs> Jeffrey Steele. All your boys got the coolest name. Oh, yeah. Like, like Jackson. And like, like, <laughs> right, right. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out my man. He's but Jeffrey Steele. Yeah, man. Is I he mean, a spy? He was, I know, right? <laughs> He's Poor one name. the coolest <laughs> cats you'll ever meet. Um, but he... It was interesting because we connected through social media. You know, a lot of people dog on social media, but honestly, um, social media like has uh, changed my life in a in a good way. So for so many reasons, yeah, you know, it's because, all how you use it. and I've utilized it pretty well, I think. But uh, a lot of like some of my best friends now and uh, connections, clients like have come mm-hmm. from social media, mm-hmm. but again, it's, it's how you use it. You know, it's, that's key. I mean, that's how you and I fucking read like Instagram. I was like, I right. saw this dude. I'm like, bro, this dude's on Instagram. Let me hit him up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly. Exactly. So and Instagram and 
for sure is, is a huge networking, yeah. I mean, way to connect, you know, really so, is. um, it's been a blessing for sure in my life, you know, yeah. but, and there is a lot of nonsense to it and, and yeah. you can get, you know, way too wrapped up in it. You gotta, yeah. we all gotta be careful with that. Mm -hmm. But, um, anyway, so yeah, there was a, a few key people, um, and, and this guy, Jeff, man, he was like, it was like, I remember, I'll never forget it, one Saturday morning when I was kind of like deep in the storm. Um, I kind of, I re just remember, I don't even remember exactly what it was, but like I had a something I needed, uh, almost like a question, like this is what's going on. I don't get it. I need it answered so I can like get to tomorrow kind yeah, of thing. Take, you know? which, like, which way do I step here? <clears throat> yeah, I, I yeah. have no idea. Like I'm scared to take the next step. Right, right. And um, and I literally called, we had connected like on Facebook through surfing. He's, you know, and um, and so I talked to him a couple times briefly about some like surf stuff, surfboards or something. And then I called him that morning and, you know, it started out with a little bit of surf talk. And then I was like, hey, so so he's, he's a pastor among other things. Mm -hmm. He's been a counselor. He does um, some work, um, like grief counseling now, where he works with people. That's so, that's so trippy to me, dude. Yeah, yeah. He, he works with families that are like, their loved ones are like on death's door, mm -hmm. you know. My mentor, my best friend, and the man who, I had two. My brother, who's in the other room, you hear him munching on chips or something. <laughs> no, actually, yep. he's probably cooking a steak. And <laughs> Adam Lowry, shout out Adam Lowry. Okay. He's a psychotherapist, huh. almost a pastor. I met him through comedy in the dark time and huh. he 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 was the one okay him and my brother were the ones that showed me how to take that first thing really? they, they couldn't they were like i ain't taking a step for you motherfucker yeah, yeah, yeah. but walk that way right yeah. right right so exactly it's tripping me out that you're explaining this person because it's so close yeah i'd put somebody so close to the description that you're explaining in okay my path in this time too it's freaking nice me out. yeah yeah no it's so this this guy um i mean 10 minutes into the conversation I was like, Jeff, like, I don't know. I just feel led to kind of share this with you a little bit of like what I'm going through. And, um, I think I asked him, I was like, have you done some counseling? And once he said he had, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to unload on you a little bit right now. And <laughs> it's see what's coming. Come yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like from that moment on <clears throat> one, he kind of like helped me through that specific situation that I was dealing with in my head. And then, I mean, it, it, gosh, this probably went on for another like five months or so, um, five or six months. And he just like was there every step of the way. Um, just like, man, I got you. I'm here with you. And, so, and, and basically what ended up happening is I found out that uh, his ex, I mean, every time I told him a story about what I was going through, he was like, yeah, it's something related. that was my, like, that's exactly what I went through mm -hmm. with my ex. You know, like literally, like he, he was kind of, his, understood his mind was blown because I was like explaining this stuff to him and he's like, oh my gosh, like. I call this, it God's coincidence. Yeah, That's how he yeah. talks to me. It's right. clear as day. Like, I don't even call them coincidence. Anymore. Right. The big ones. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, that's God talking. Yeah. That's so, I mean, talking. there's things that were going down and I just, I was like, this, none of this makes any sense. I don't understand why is this happening? Like, um, why is this person doing these things like just in and and especially from like um a psychological standpoint yeah because when nothing makes sense you need to understand everything you want to yeah you, you really just like find closure. such, a, such Not, a desire to like right yeah. so so he was able to literally lay out like okay this is why these things are happening because this is what's going on this is the psychological yeah he was, side he of was this. able to give you a perspective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, man, I mean, that that literally is one of the things that helped me get through I'm the whole one of these coincidences deal. right now. Right, right. <laughs> so it was just, um, I mean, he was like an absolute godsend. Like, That's I call awesome. him like an angel, you know, from heaven pretty much. And, I mean, there was a couple moments that, um, I mean, I'll just, uh, won't tell you all the details, but basically, like, he was the guy who was answering my phone call at, like, 3.30 in the morning when, like, shit got as bad as it could ever get you know like that kind of person that you know i, I you know i may, i even called my dad you know he wasn't picking up I called another friend but this dude was picking up the phone and like i got you man you know yeah. you just taught me what godson actually meant. i never stopped to appreciate the word yeah yeah it resonated like, with him so much like, oh you're a godson 
right. felt like, compelled like, to answer the phone just because of that. And it was like crazy. it was like he was waiting there yeah. for my phone. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like half asleep or it was like I'm here for Almost you. Almost like he knew that he knew that in this juncture in your life, he's like, all right, this dude's probably going to need me. <laughs> so it's almost like. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, I don't tell you, this was like, like three in the morning. Yeah. Literally. You know, Christmas Eve was the moment I had my epiphany of, of, of awakening. I called it mm -hmm. um, where I truly like it clicked in my head what Adam had done for me. Yeah. Uh, it's midnight. Right. Christmas Eve. I'm low. Yeah. You know, I'm broke. Like I, I'm a big present guy, and, and all I have are like some heartfelt gifts, which I like, but I couldn't spoil my family, so I'm feeling bad. Mm -hmm. And it like clicked what just happened. So I'm Adam's texting me next to his wife in midnight, and it's it's just it's fully convalescing what this man's done for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm bawling my eyes out, yeah, and crying, and I'm like, you know, just thank you so much for being in my life, bro. Like, yeah, like yeah. it's it's starting to make sense, right, right. What God was like, I don't know why I deserve it. Yeah, but I promise you, from here on out, I'm gonna do everything I can to <clears throat> yeah. repay the face. Like, and then of course, he's like, right. no, you don't owe me shit. Yeah, I'm like, but you're gonna you're gonna owe that to somebody else that yes. needs your help. Hey, right? Amen. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Which is is kind of tripping me out ever. because there's a young man. I'm not gonna say his name um, yet. He'll mm. be on the podcast. Okay. Um, he kind of like. He's not as low as I was, but mm -hmm. it's clear. Yeah, and I yeah, even yeah. talked to Adam about it. I'm like, yo, this this kid's on the path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I told Adam, because maybe Adam could do for him what he did for me. And Adam's like, it's crazy you say it, because Adam's like, maybe that's your job. Right, right. I was right. like, yeah, whoa, like, dude. Yo. So I'm trying my best to like do what he did, you know? Right, man? right. And, and totally. I'm so proud of this kid, dude. He's, yeah. he's fucking two weeks strong in the ice bath. Nice. He's starting to bounce these motivational videos back to me. Okay. And, you know, he's like getting on his shit and he's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. all right, Bubba, yeah. let's do yeah. this. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's crazy you said that. Yeah, that's man. Awesome, man. No, you totally. No, that's, and that ultimately, I think, is why God allows us to go through crazy seasons of life, you know, because, yeah, he, I mean, we're going to do the same for somebody else, you know, yeah. and, and be able to help others. Yeah. Right be able to relate to everything they're going through and give them that same motivation and like you got this bro you yeah. can get through this and i'm learning that it's a whole new level of learning like when you're not learning it's it's like our duty to learn in the bad times but mm -hmm. if you force the learning upon yourself it's right. gonna it'll limit the bad times and, and you yep. now but now you're like forcing yourself to be in that same mind state like like all right this this young man i'm talking about he's not, i mean he's not that much younger than me i don't know why i say young but, yeah, you know he's he's coming up yeah um following a path similar path right um it, it's it's now all right what lessons because i don't want to fuck this up mm -hmm. you know my mentor and, and big brother did this for me right yeah so i need to make sure mm -hmm. so like the big one for me is patience no okay. you know, I, i'm trying to ignore immediate gratification mm -hmm. i don't want to unload on this young man with everything i got yeah it's it's kind of listening i call it following god's path Mm -hmm. Everything I do, people are like, oh, this is amazing. I'm like, I ain't making no decisions here, dude. Yeah, yeah. My decision is to end my night thanking God for today. Yeah. Wake up thanking him for today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gratitude, man. That's it. Yeah. It's huge Shout piece. out Cat Williams told me that. Like, that changed everything in the last, like, two weeks. Like, yeah. going to bed and literally, like, making peace with the fact that today might be my last day. Yeah, yeah. And, and no, right I heard before, you say something about that. The that other changed day. everything, bro. Like, yeah. Yeah, to like literally make peace with the fact That's like, good. all right, today's it. Yeah. Well, thanks, God. I appreciate it, man. Mm -hmm. you know, thank you for the new friends and, and the conversation. Thank you for whatever. Right, and, right, right. And then I go to sleep and I wake up. Yeah. Although I never pray in the first, I'm, I'm a dick. The first like two minutes of being awake for yeah, whatever yeah. reason, like oh, I, yeah, I have yeah. a strict no texting, no talking policy. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. like I'm a morning person. Okay. Yeah, I'm up and at them four or five every day for the last ten years. Okay. Outside of like weekends. Wow. Yeah, okay. it's just it's four or five. Yeah, trick of the trade. In the, the morning. Trade. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, wow. trick of the trade. Okay. You know, like especially nice. now where I'm trying to do the gym because I got to be in Orlando at like seven. Wow. Yeah. So like I'm a morning person, but dude, mm -hmm. like. If I text you in the first like two to five minutes, yeah, I'm gonna regret that text right. <laughs> for yeah. sure. Yeah. So uh, on my drive in, I I make sure to look up at the sky. I try to get it when the sun's peeping. Mm -hmm. Thank God for today. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thanks for the family and I. I don't know about you. You know, I can ask you guys. You both, you know, embrace God. Like, 
I try to be very selfless in my prayers. Mm-hmm. Like, do you find that to be important in a prayer? Like, I don't ask him for much. I feel like because I asked him for so much. Right, when, right. When shit was heavy, I'm like, please help me. Yeah. You know, and now I pray for other people. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think I think when we're in I don't a think place, it really matters, but I don't know. Well, no, I think it. I think it. Ma- it does matter. I just think it's where you're at in your life okay. at that yeah, season. Yeah, gotcha. The intention you have behind yep. behind the All prayer. Right. You know? right. Right. It has, and I just don't want to take his love for granted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, but I think he knows your heart. Mm-hmm. And so if you're like some like super prideful, mm-hmm. egotistical person that, you know, what was me? I don't, like, he's probably not going to be answering that guy's prayers yeah. because as much as he was somebody with like good intentions and a good heart that really needs, um, I think that's kind of how God works. He will give you what you need. Like, Kind of like my my dad that raised me, um, I, th- I felt like he's been pretty good about that kind of thing. Like, you know, I would ask for something, um, and you know, sometimes he'd be like, "No, like, you're gonna have to work this out yourself." Mm-hmm. You know, and I'd be like, "What? Like, come on, dad." You know, and then and then sometimes like a week later, he'll hit me up and be like, "Well, I've been thinking about this, so I'm gonna." introduce you to this person or I'm going to help you out maybe with this rather than what you asked for. But this is what I feel like you need right now. And I think that's a what wise man right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, and, for him to take the time and to, and to yeah. still have that in his mind and then bring it back exactly. up to you and be like, you know what? Been thinking about it. That's, right, that right. is such a beautiful thing yep. to hear. Because, yeah. I mean, and that's how you, I mean, I, as for, I can't speak for women cause I don't know how to, I've never been a woman, <laughs> but like as a young man, I mean, when I finally got a father in this life, you know, his rule was very simple. Yeah. He said, Kyle, wake up, wake up early, work hard. Everything mm. else is going to work itself out. Hmm. You know, everything, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He was, he was not. Consistency and discipline. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Wake up. And then I, yeah. And he, and that's exactly what I've done is. Yeah, man. Fucking wake up. Let's wake up and work, bro. Right. And the right. rest is going to work out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've yeah. been applying that five, the, what, what do they call it? The 5 a.m. club or whatever is like the rich people. Like most uh, rich been, people wake up at 5 a.m. No, yeah, yeah, the 5 a.m. club or something like that. I've been doing that for 15 years. Really? Yeah, wow. Like Very that. important. Good for you, man. Yeah. What time do you go to bed? Um, I try to anyway. Uh, I've Since I'm in a healthier point in my life now, yeah. I can, I'd like to be in bed by like 9, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Because I, I would like to get my eight. What I've learned, though, mm-hmm. is if I get too comfortable with eight hours, that becomes a requirement of my body, yeah. which, which is good. Right, you know, right. But, but if I'm not in a season where that's necessary, like right now, I'm in a season of physical and mental growth and spiritual growth. Like mm-hmm. my father also taught me, he's like, because I remember, he's like, Kyle, a man really only needs four to six hours. Okay. Like, well, like we can we can survive just right, fine. Right, right, right. Like yep. you might not be the most rested and everything, but yeah. you know, sometimes God's journey's got us on a grind. Right. Like right, right now, I. I try to do my ice bath in my steam room every day. Okay. But you can't do an ice bath within five to six hours of a lift. Okay. Yeah, I probably should have told you that. Oh, really? Well, no, it's nothing bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just um, when you get in an ice bath, it's like a shock therapy, basically. It freezes. Now, again, I'm, I'm going to botch this, scientist, <laughs> so just fucking shout it. Yeah. Um, I asked my trainer about that because I remember it, you t- yeah. you're asking me. But yeah, go, go for it. It go freezes it. some sort of protein in our muscles that okay. inhibits growth. No, okay. Like So you're still getting benefits of strength. It's just and muscle recovery. growth yeah. no, okay. because of the cost of recovery. So I try to work out in the morning. No, the see. problem with that is I start my job between 6.30 and 7 a.m. And I work in Kissimmee on the other side of Orlando. Wow. So, okay. yeah, no, I need to be at the gym at 4.30. No okay. guy. Yeah, it's a struggle. Right? Yeah, I'm. That's right now. That's my goal in life is to get good at that, and, and it's just mm. you know because like 4:45, I'm good with that. That doesn't bother me at all. I'll okay. get up 4:45, like clockwork. Right. Um, but I need to get on that 4 a.m. train. No guy. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. my next challenge as a man to take that one on, and it's not forever. Right. right but right, right now, that's the journey God's got me on. Yeah. You know, because I really, for the first time, between. TRT therapy and making these good decisions. Now it's time to. All right, I want to see how good can I make my body. Yeah. You yeah. Know, how strong can this vessel really be? Okay. And it's not for the first time in my life. It's not it has nothing to do with ego. It's because I want my nephews to see a strong role model. I want mm-hmm. I want to be strong to defend 
yeah. my family. Like, if they need me, I need to be ready to react. No, okay. You know? So yeah. I'm finding a lot of strength in that. I've, I'm finding more strength in my desire to help for others than I ever did for myself. And mm. by doing that, like I talked earlier, I'm finding immense value in myself yeah, yeah it's yeah. very strange well, that's cool well, like it's a reflection yeah it's of very yourself, strange so very very it's strange very important to me. yeah yeah because awesome. i was always that sad sack I, I mean i when i skateboard a lot i was in good shape when i surfed a lot i was in good shape but never quite to the goal yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i mean okay yeah man that's good stuff mm -hmm. i can appreciate that for sure well, yeah, you look like you've been on a journey of physical health since you were like five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, my, my dad has a lot to do with that. I think. And I mean, obviously, you know, genetics and all that play a part. I mean, it, you're, you're never going to be like exactly what you want to be, you know. But you can be uh, the best you. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Or, exactly. or at least a better version of you yesterday. Right. That's you know? the thing. Be better than yourself every day. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think I've realized that, um, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, verse in the Bible it says um, love your neighbor as you love yourself mm -hmm. and most people all they think about in that is loving your neighbor you know and they're like oh right. yeah you gotta love your neighbor blah blah but they don't think about what it so what does loving yourself mean right and that basically means to me it means being the best version of yourself yeah mm -hmm. because you can't properly love your neighbor mm -hmm. if you're not the best version of yourself exactly yeah. right. if you're not a healthy person like i mean you know we'll I, never be like maybe a hundred percent i mean you know you can get close whatever but you know someone like david goggins you know oh, like that guy's just an animal right an absolute, i think life so, is not about being a hundred percent life is always about learning you know that 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 never-ending process of learning i think it's one of my biggest important point of view yeah, that's what that's deep. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest dream, like pipe. I'm a pipe dreamer. I always have been. Yeah. You know, what I mean, this is actually the first time I've taken a dream and brought it to reality. So I'm just riding it. Yeah. Uh, but one of my biggest pipe dreams is like being worthy of a Goggins challenge. Okay. Where, like, like I don't think it's ever gonna happen because yeah, that dude's yeah. next level. I know, I'm, dude. But I, I hope there's a there's a version of me in the future. Yeah. That finds I I'll never be Goggins. Like like right, that no. just ain't me. But no. I would like to test myself one time to like like be like and get enough attention to be like Goggins. I want to try to survive one week with you. Right. You know, like let's let's disappear. Let, let's get some bros together and yeah. I want to see like push it. Like try right. to let's do this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know because he is next level. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's savage. You yeah. see that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see the one I posted the other day? His the wife run. Dude, yeah. he like, left the gym and he just tells. And that's what that's yeah. true love right there. Right. Like, yeah, he, he just tells his wife, "We're I'm going to run a hundred miles," so she just drives slowly <laughs> behind him for a hundred miles. Yeah. Oh, that was what? That what did was you just say to me, dude? I know. Yeah. <laughs> that was insanity. Yeah, it's yeah. it, dude. That's a whole another animal right I there. Mean, he has perfected that part of the brain. Yeah, you know, that, that mm -hmm. part of, and I love, I love his, you know, what he says is in his book and everything. It, it's he wanted to stop leaving stuff on the table. Mm -hmm. and, and when you truly try to find out how much you're leaving on the table, yeah, you will surprise the hell out yeah. of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. You that's know, like even true. these, like take these ice baths for example. Right. Like, especially when you're new to them, right. that's a daunting thing to think about. But then, yeah, you know, you get four minutes in. I'm like, oh, you're at four. You're like, oh, I can do another minute. I know, I yeah. know. That was I was shocked, honestly. Right. I really actually, was wild, liking dude. it. You like? Yeah, yeah. I was team. like. Man, I got this. Like, yeah. I'd be I, very interested to see like a man of your like, because you you've always been very driven, yeah. obviously throughout your life, especially physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I know how much it's helped me, and yeah. I wasn't that person. I'd be very interested to see what it does for you physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm. I, I need to get one. Okay. Honestly, because yeah. or maybe I'll just come over. You yeah, know, no, dude. A couple times. Help a yourself. Even if I'm not here, I'm telling you right now, you go in the side gate, yeah, yeah. Your bags and jump in, jump out. Like, ain't yeah. nobody gonna say nothing around here. All right, right. Yeah, help exactly. yourself. Okay. At least until you get one. That. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll always help anybody that's on a journey. Of, like that's one thing I do know. That's one thing God wants me to do. Yeah. You right. know, noble intent and positivity, dude. Yeah. Knock yourself out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, man. Because it's no, it's. That's one of the most substantial things I've done for myself mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't understand what it's doing, but I like it. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. And obviously it's doing something good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. No you can feel all. it when you get out. You're like, okay, 100%. that's new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was shocking how it didn't it didn't feel like super cold. No. It becomes like you say, kind of it's like a different a, feeling. This, 
it's a cold shock. warmth like it's, some, it's something it's you weird. don't expect at all yeah. yeah yeah and the breath work obviously is a big part of it too so for big. sure and i knew that that's why i took some good long breaths going and i'll give it. you some advice like if you ever are like feeling wild hair and you want to come use it yeah my brother and i are gone all day um try to get over here on a sunrise okay and i aim myself towards the tree on mm-hmm. the right of the yard and i'll put my phone on the windowsill behind me yeah make a good song yeah that connection to God, like yeah, looking yeah. up there in a beautiful morning sunrise, is yeah. that's sure. a special yeah. kind of high on life. Like right, you're, right. you're sitting in that shit and just looking up at the trees and the birds and, hmm. and the sun's peeking over the horizon. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, in cool. that moment, I challenge you to not pray. Right, um, right. for a moment, be like, "Yo, thank you, man. Yeah, this yeah. Is something, something's happening right now. It's All pretty right. special, dude. Huh? Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, it's rad, dude. Good stuff. And I, I just can't wait to see what God's got around the next corner. Yeah, I really can't. Yeah, man. What, whatever it may be, it might be a weathered storm. It might be. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you never know. It's the the mountaintop and and the valleys, right? Yeah, and everything in between. And yeah, one one quote that I like is sometimes progress is 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 not gaining something, it's losing something. So mm-hmm. that's a that's something oh, that fucking oh, yeah. killed me really hard. That's so yeah, that's true, a, man. That's yeah. a deep one. So. Yeah, so, yeah. So and it's sometimes a beautiful thing, man. Life life is a beautiful thing that yeah. It's it's beauty is inside such a. It's almost like uh, God has a very weird sense of humor kind of thing. Oh, you know yeah, I mean? for sure. That's for <laughs> yeah. He wants to give you something. He's going to do it in a very weird, special <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, where you see his hand in it. And yeah. like, yeah, I mean, in my situation, um, I think if it wouldn't have been so extreme, I don't think um, it would have like resonated how it was supposed to. You know, like right. it, it took something that extreme to, to take me to this point place where i was like oh my gosh like that just think? wrecked me so hard mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm a i'm a very like forgiving uh person that and this is because of my parents and the way they raised me mm-hmm. um and i do i've got it always had a heart for people um and because of that um i mean it's 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 been a a struggle because people take advantage of that a lot of times yeah. you know and so I, I've been kind of doesn't stop you either. trained in a sense to always look for the best in people, mm-hmm. and that a lot of disappointment. In that, yeah, but, man, but not, that's what hurts, bro. Because mm-hmm. you're like, and again, in my situation with my ex, I was like, it can be a superpower. How can you ever? Yeah, it can be, when but then can be your own it. worst enemy mm-hmm. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's sometimes that's what it's become, and you know, and then it's like. It, you do get tougher skin through it, but it's like it's like what's the balance, you know? And well, so strong people get through it for, in a very positive way. A lot of people just turn very bitter. For me, right, it's laughter. Right. That's yep. why it's loyalty, love, laughter. Yeah, because I'm just like you. Right. I, lo- I try to look for the best, and, and my my brother said something a couple months back, and it's it's been stuck in my head. Mm-hmm. He said, "In this life, because I've always been emotional, mm-hmm. he's always been logical." Okay. So through that, we kind of found this middle ground. God, God brings us together. This is the third time I've lived with him. Yeah, he, he brings us together when we need to be together. Okay. Um, and he said, the amount of men in this life, or the amount of people in this life that are afforded the luxury of my emotion, is so small. Yeah. In the grand scheme, that all I can afford to give everyone else is logic and laughter. Hmm. And I okay. stopped to think about this. Yeah, and, and being a man like you, or and, you know, like you, like a forgiving sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. Like when I took emotion off the table, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I, I forgive you, I do something nice for you, and you burn me. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm not angry, I'm not sad, I'm not disappointed. I think about it logically real quick. I understand what your manipulation was, and I just laugh about it. I'm like, I'm totally. like, you're lost, bro. Right. <laughs> like, right, right. Like, like, totally. Like, you're lost, man. Like, you had me, and yeah, now yeah, you don't. Yeah. And yeah. then I, I just can. He's he's given me this superpower to where like I can still be that great person that I want to be, yeah. And I didn't have to harden myself like the world's right. been trying to tell me to do forever. Yeah, the world's been yeah, yeah. The world tries to tell guys like us our whole life like you can't do that, you can't do that. Yeah. Why not? Right. I don't want to be a dick. I don't want to play mental games. I just want to be me. I know. Mm-hmm. I know. You know. Yeah. So yeah. And I there can... is some uh, like you know I've, I've researched a lot of uh, psychology about um, men and women. Mm-hmm. And, and the relationships that we have, because it's obviously a, a very important. I mean, it's easy to hang out with the boys, right? Yeah, right. Just like we're doing right now. Yeah, like, sure. 
this is as genuine and as natural we can be ourselves and we don't have to hide anything yeah, like it's, it's no weird vibes like yeah we don't have to watch ourselves or what we say um but with women it's different it is yes and Very. not and in a bad way it just is it is it different, can, different. It, exactly. it, right it can be amazing uh if you meet the right one and and you conduct yourself in the right way but i think um that's where it's really important and i didn't realize this for a long time but and that's why i've really been working on it and studying the psychology behind the relationship between a man and a woman because it's like we think we got to figure it out and but we don't most mm -hmm. of us guys have no clue no and i don't know if we ever will I mean, we can try to be better. Yeah, right. And, like, and you're yeah. right. I don't know that we'll totally ever, you know, what's that book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus? Yeah, yeah, one of those, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's really, they're so they're wired so differently yeah, than we are. I believe they're, I truly believe, like, a strong, powerful woman is the most powerful creature on the planet. They're life givers. Yeah. They're emotional creatures, and they're, they're, they're equipped to handle emotions. Right, like, like, all right, you know, I a logical, you know, all emotional. right, the the <laughs> I've seen it to where, like, all right, when a woman gets pregnant and then she loses a job, mm -hmm. I've seen this firsthand. Yeah, the emotional and hormonal roller coaster that she went on. Yeah, and knowing that not only can I not do anything, like this is an internal battle that this warrior is taking on. Right, and I don't know if I could handle that. Yeah, you know, like because yeah. it's, oh, it's yeah, completely sure. involuntary. You right, know what I mean? Right, like you're yeah. making a human being, right? right, right that eventually yeah. you're gonna push out of your body. Yeah, and dude. then to like, hey, like it's nuts. I, God made them yeah. special for a reason, but no, yeah, there's there's two sides of every coin. Right, well, right, I feel like societal, societally, uh, blah, blah, blah. society in itself, and the way we have these words like capitalism, and this that also has something to do with with how it affects the human. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I feel like. I come from talking a about like a social, con social was, construct space. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like you know, we we are placed in a situation where there's so many factors and so many things coming from so many different ways. Yeah. That a lot of you know women because they're emotional, a lot of them can't handle that kind of stuff. Right. And right. A lot of insecurities, but because of the very societal way of the way we live, mm -hmm. also has a lot to do with why why they are the way they are. I feel now like you oh, mix yeah. it, you mix yeah, it yeah, a new yeah. age like the modern day man too. Right. I mean, that's that's same that's, thing that's, with a, us. that's a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. right that's exactly. A, a weak man yeah, exactly. is no less than a weak woman. Like yeah. yeah right. Well, right. What's the saying? Weak, well, weak weak men create. Um, uh, Good men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. Weak men create bad times. Bad times create good men. Hmm. It's a process okay. that it just keeps rolling over the years. And I years do believe we can get ahead of that cycle. You just got to be aware of it because even in, I think, and you can't deny the cycle. The cycle is God's. That's mm -hmm. uh, just, it's, it's tale as old as time, you know? Yeah. But I do think it's, it's the duty of the old souls or, you know, the good men and women of this world to like find each other mm -hmm. instill that in each other to mm -hmm. make sure that like, all right, the rest of y'all can do your goofy shit. Mm -hmm. You want to cut your penises off and, and <laughs> whatever <laughs> you want to do, bro, do it over there. Yeah, We're going to yeah. be over here doing our thing. Right. Cause mm -hmm. what doesn't go out of style is good men and good women. Right. And, and all the way back. Exactly. You can take it back to humanity, the cavemen time. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that's always been a constant. Yep. And, uh, and the beauty about that is like, you don't have to start that way. It's mm -hmm. a choice. It's a simple choice that you make every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and how you carry yourself. That's right. the point of what we're doing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it probably took a, a good man and a good woman to instill that in you, right? Uh, yes. So, and that's why a doubt. the world is going 100. crazy right now. It yeah. took, I was too much of a the rebel. Guidance is not that, it's not there anymore. We're exactly. As much as it used to be. I was yeah. definitely sure. too much of a rebel to realize it at a young age, but when it finally did, I was very angry at myself for not appreciating it when I did. Mm. Oh, yeah. My yeah, mother yeah. and father are everything. Right, right. Yeah, even when I couldn't understand what they were trying to do, my mother, even at our darkest times, all she ever wanted was, for me was the best. Mm -hmm. and, and she took on pain. Like, I told her just the other day, you know, she we were talking about money or something, and she was like, oh, no, you know, we'll help you guys out. I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, no, it's my turn. Right, yeah. right. It's my turn. Yeah. And, you know, I, I got this now. And, right, right. And the pain she went through, and then my father to like to, to deal with the shit I put him through. Yeah, and yeah. He, he's not even my biological father, like a bro. Right. Yeah, it's so, true yeah. love. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So God, he was my godsend for yeah. sure. 
Yeah. Um, well, so I'll tell you what, because I don't want to, I don't want to, I kind of want to leave the world waking, waiting, or leave them wanting a little more with the Matt Dayton story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I got another ritual that we like to do here. Um, it's two questions that kind of encompass us. And okay. Then, and then we'll, we want, we really want you to give a shout out like to yourself, you yeah. know, promote whatever you're trying to promote. Anything okay. so that yeah, whatever sponsorship, but I, I know I know you're yeah. working with that company, that Imperial. Are you still working with them? Oh no, wait, that's the that's the that's the beer. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the beer yeah. Hat. yeah that's, that's, a good, that's a good beer, by the way. Yeah, it yeah. is. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's solid. The Costa Rican yeah, beer, it is. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, so, I saw I saw some new stickers on your board, man. On some of the posts, it's like, is that is that? Are you working with a new company? Yeah, yeah. I'm always kind of working with a bunch that's, of different companies, that's awesome, like man. trying to. The Laird, did, did, did the Laird thing end up happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I worked with the Laird Apparel for a little while. That was super cool. Have um, you met that monster? Campaigns with them. Well, it's funny because, like... Because uh, he takes all this hell stuff we're talking and goes to another Oh, planet. yeah, yeah. Not, That guy yeah. is, like, <laughs> another, you know... Like, I mean, we Peloton can all... bike in the fucking 200-degree <laughs> sauna. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, he doesn't even get excited about riding waves until they're, like, 30 yeah. feet, you know? It's, I mean, like, that's his he, jam. What he did with thirty the, foot Hawaiian, the, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Did, like a true thirty. <laughs> yeah. Um, what he did with the pool stuff, I think, is the most fascinating thing I've ever seen in modern weightlifting and weight training. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The, like the he, stuff he, underwater. Yeah, him and his right, wife created that right. system where they do all the training underwater. Like he said that they're adding huh. like ten inches to NBA players' verticals, really, with no impact on your joints because they're yeah. doing all their weight oh, training right. in the water. Yeah. Like yeah, training yeah. to jump in the water and weightlift. He's like, that's you're getting right. all the benefits of lifting. With no pressure on your joints. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah, and he said something like 10, 12 inches to vertical. I'm like, what, no did, what did you just say, dude? That's interesting. It's wild, to take that out. Yeah. Well, I, I just, um, I'll give a shout out to these guys because I'm, I'm uh, going to start working with them quite a bit, hopefully this year. Uh, but there's a place in Costa Rica, in Jaco, actually. It's kind of just on the outskirts. There's some open area with some hills and things, and they've put themselves there, which is great. So it's kind of overlooking um, but, uh, they're called, uh, surf synergy is the name of okay. the, uh, it's, it's kind of like a glorified surf camp, but cool. they're doing some really amazing things. And the, the founder, it was all, you know, his vision, uh, for this place to be born and, uh, they're doing, so obviously surfing is the draw and they're creating an atmosphere where you can go there. You're going to get on the best waves every morning with this crew. They're going to video it. They're gonna coach you through the video. Full experience. Yeah, so that's kind of where it starts. But then also they've got, um, you know, yoga. They've got. They're doing a lot of breath work. My boy Marcel, that kind of runs the show there. He's super into like breath work. Um, Doing the pool workouts, exactly what you're talking about. Which I didn't. I've never really uh, searched out a lot of that stuff. I want to check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're doing that. Um, they do the ice baths. Okay, um, so these people are they're 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 creating superhumans. Is what they're doing. Oh yeah, I like they're, that. They're taking it like next level. Mm-hmm. So not only you know the surfing side of it, um, but then they're teaching you how to stay in really good condition, mm-hmm. take care of yourself. I mean, of course, Hell, right got, there you got mental, physical taken care of. There's only a couple pillars left after that. Right, right. It's amazing and, how that's such a big part of, of of surfing world. When 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 I was a kid in the Andy Irons era, like. There's yeah. no training. <laughs> I know, I know, it's right? It's so amazing how that just if they did, switched. If they did, it was independent. Because I'm sorry, right. there's no way. Like, he, they were naturally, but he, he was jacked, bro. He, yeah, but, yeah, they, yeah. These, but he was fat, though. Like, he, you would see him without a shirt. I he wasn't that. in shape. Yeah. Like, I got I got the experience in 05 and 06. Yeah. I went to Hawaii with, oh, yeah? uh, with yep. Tupac. That's right. So, those yeah. were my only two, like, real, like, I got on a plane, surf trips kind of thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. Before, before, you know, personal bullshit started yeah. happening. But Right, right. But, uh, yeah, dude, I got to. To see like you know i got to be at uh shane bashan's retirement party oh, okay. and like andy iron showed up and yeah. luke egan and tosh burrow and all these people yep. were like this close to me right right so, but dude like that watch like seeing andy irons and just live just being in that little era for mm. that very small window in december during yep. the pipe masters and during that whole thing yeah just really showed me how freaking wild those times were oh my gosh and then to to come you know let's say let's 13 years later yeah uh, 14 years later and and man so the training that, the discipline oh, the yeah, just the, the oh, regimen it's, it's insane well it's become a professional sport yeah exactly but whereas it's before it was like these guys were raging yeah and then was, the next day going out and competing bro it was amazing yeah, you it's think, crazy you think rob and kelly were going after money or they just wanted to one-up each other because they knew 
Yeah, well, like Kelly I watched that whole documentary and like those two like being best friends and just yeah. Well, yeah, that's yeah. even another thing about Kelly is like he was just already so ahead of his game because he was training. Right, right, and right. Then and look at his results. Right, yeah. and it's he didn't incredible. get into the partying, and mm-hmm. he, he yep. always was taking care of himself yep. and yep. had that mental mindset like I'm not gonna do drugs, I'm uh-huh. not gonna rage like uh-huh. these other guys, and that's yeah. why he won a well, lot of world titles. Exactly. Look at Kobe. Yeah. Kobe was notorious for mm-hmm. being. He didn't like. I remember there was one clip, you know. He only really respected the players that he saw in the gym at 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would wake up an hour before well, to always, try to beat put, them. His into thing the gym. was the, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's fucking it was, awesome. He's, his thing was practice before practice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. you know, the love and he for was the in game. the gym every day at 4 a.m. And yep. He often talked about like the only ones he ever gave shout outs to were the guys he ran into at like three o'clock in the morning. He's like, yeah. Dang, I, I remember. I got to train more than that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember hearing a story about uh, Larry Bird. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. And he was probably, if you think about it, I mean, look at him, like a big, goofy white guy mm-hmm. that yeah. happened to be tall. And I heard that he put so many hours mm-hmm. in the gym by himself shooting that basketball. I also heard that he was the most ruthless mental shit talker on the planet. Really? Yeah. Oh, dude, all the old school OGs okay. talking about, like, I, they're like, oh, he would walk up to you, like, I'm talking, like, the best players in the world, and you yeah. walk up to their face and be like, I'm about to bust a three in your fucking face. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. Of course. Oh, yeah. Oh, he awesome. was a machine. And like you said, and big, you goofy it. white dude. Yeah. Like, like the, 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 With the pro going on. And, right. Oh, and just in your face like, <laughs> yeah. what's up, bitch? And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Like, like damn! Yeah. <laughs> no, that awesome, dude, I, I heard, I've heard stories about him. I won't forget. But just hours and hours of like, you know, free throws and three-pointers mm-hmm. by himself in the gym. Discipline, and yeah. That's... Tony. Where the greatness happens. Tony Robbins mm-hmm. got a great line. You know, we're we're praised in public for what we practice in private. Mm, yeah. You know, yeah. and then when you're Ooh, on a stage, like when you're on a stage like that, like you better step the game up. Yeah. You know, like I mean, even with a, I don't, if a lot this, of eyes on you, if this goes anywhere, like this has been a huge motivator for me, like as a from a like a a subjective standpoint, like physically. Mm-hmm. You know, like if I'm gonna be, if we're gonna be in the public's eye, like I owe it to the public to be in my best possible shape. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, like I'm gonna start putting uh, beef tallow on my skin just so it like, right. like, like clears up. Like I owe the people that, and if this is my art, and if this is my, you know, you just be the best in whatever you are, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah one yeah. one thing that I'd like to, to start this is, is is I'm starting to read a lot more books. No, oh, yeah. And I That's was told cool. by a good friend of mine, he's like, hey, man, you're starting a podcast and you're going to start talking a lot. Yeah. It's very good for you to read because you're going to start creating a bigger vocabulary. And that's right. the kind of stuff that's it's really, that's I, I love huge. the fact that I'm getting back into reading a little bit. Because no, I was into yeah, it back yeah. in when I was working in Miami. Right. Because we were kind of forced by, yeah. by the company I was working with down, yep. down in South Beach. Mm-hmm. But I kind of quit doing all that and stuff. No, okay. It it's, feels good to get back into a... A disciplined, right, more right. Discipline. Yep. You know, yeah. All right. So let's let's reel her back in. Before and along, we're gonna tell we're gonna tell <laughs> Matt's talking. whole story. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love this. I live for it. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and if there's any, I don't know if there's any other specific questions you guys have for I me have, or. Well, I have two. But, sure. It's it's to it's to wrap up our portion before we go into the uh, Matt Dayton, you know, kind of tagline, tag it off. Um, okay. First and foremost, have you found in this life that you have been your own worst enemy hmm or more importantly do you find that people are oftentimes their own worst enemy yeah yeah um, individually and, and answer, think about answer it. the question individually and then or and then like feel free like i said we, mm-hmm. this, feel free to think about it a little bit i know it's a big question i go kind of deep on that one right so if you want yeah feel free to think about it and yeah and come yeah, back yeah. to me yeah i mean i, I think the the worst place and sometimes the best, but you cannot um, get in your own head uh, to a place, uh, especially when it's, it's negative, you know? And th- I think that is where we're, we can become our own worst enemy. Like, mm-hmm. um, y- and, and that's where the discipline comes in. Like, like you said, reading books, mm-hmm. you know, what do you, what are you putting in your mind, you know, day in and day out, you know, and um, who is who are you surrounding yourself with? All those things are so important. So you and, can be your own best, like own hero too. Yeah, wow, I never thought about that till just now. Yeah, 
because you can always I, switch I, up you can always flip the script baby yeah when you're when you isolate yourself i mean that is that's when you're going to become your own worst enemy yeah. mm-hmm. isolation you're the third person to come on the show and say that exact thing yes. yeah 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 and, and so that's that's incredible and i i um i'm i'm definitely like i wouldn't consider myself this huge like extrovert but i do know the importance of being around people and with community. people the, yes. yeah the community yeah. aspect and it, and I am a people person. I mean, I, I I draw a lot of my energy, but we all need times where we go and reflect and yeah. are by ourselves. And, right. And so, so key. yeah. And I think I do struggle um, with being alone. I think particularly because I was married for 19 years. Yeah, that's correct. And so I had a partner, two kids, and then that was literally like ripped out. The and you were room. never alone. Right, right. Yeah. And I mean, you know, that had its struggles too, for sure. Um, you, you go through so many different seasons without raising kids. Um, but then it's like all of a sudden, like, you are on your own, like, out of nowhere, you know, and you're like, what just happened? Yeah. You know, like, my life was forever changed. And where do I go from here? Mm-hmm. You know? And so I think um through those seasons i've really said like man i gotta make sure now now i get to choose who i want to be around and and where i go and who i call and who i go see so i better be smart about who i surround myself with you know and and like i said luckily god put a bunch of good people great people around me um and i saw him do that i mean these were people like like jeff for instance i mean that was like it was like out of nowhere. Like, where did this guy come from? Yeah, and I was dude. like, who are you? <laughs> but all of a sudden you're here to, you know. Yeah, the moment of, is weird. But looking back, you're like, oh, yeah, that was definitely, like you said, an angel. Oh, up for angel. sure. You know, I was yeah. like, it's crazy. I didn't know this guy. I mean, this we literally like messaged on Facebook, you know. And, and <laughs> I mean, for all, you know, you get messages from random people, you know. Yeah. And, and you're like. A lot of them, you're just like, nah, I'm good, bro. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah. need, like you're not the guy I need in my life right now, <laughs> yeah, for exactly. sure, you know. Yeah. I'll send you a random comment here and there, and <laughs> I'm a nice guy. But but this dude was like, you know, it just became quickly apparent that, like, this Genuine. guy, mm-hmm. I needed this dude in my life for this season. And he's still very close. I mean, I, I uh, just hung out with him two days ago. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we reconnected after we had, but he's always kind of, you know, since that season, I know I can lean on him when mm-hmm. I need to, and he'll be there to give me some good counsel. And once yeah. you reach that level of friendship, I've definitely, I don't know much in this life, but I do know once you reach that pantheon of loyalty and what I call the round table, like mm-hmm. yeah. I might not see you for fuck five years. Yeah, and I promise you. When we do link up, right, they right, pick right back up. Oh yeah, it's like I saw you yesterday. It's easy. It, it's yeah. crazy, it's right? How right. that happens, and it's so universal. No matter who I talk to, yep. That's how you know. That's the test, right there. Yeah. I'm a real friend, right, right. Yeah, they true, know like the lifelong friend. Yeah, yeah. you see him like my best friend in the whole world. Shout out Mike Salisbury. Yeah, you know, I got a couple of them. There's two him and Richard. But now I know he <laughs> wouldn't like me saying his name, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, both of them. One's a pilot, and one's a nomad surfer. Okay. You know, so Mike, he, he'll just disappear. Like, he's in California right now, living his right. best life. Richard's just flying all over the country. Okay. Like, keep in touch with him, but, yep. fuck, I went, like, two years without seeing Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I saw him, it was just, like... Didn't miss yeah. a beat, Nope. Right? Not yeah. even for a, not even a millisecond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. right back to just talking shit, playing the guitar, just... Oh, yeah. Vibing. Yeah, I like, I like that yeah. answer, man. Uh, in isolation. Yeah, that's you killer. definitely be your worst enemy. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's deep, because, you know... We just went through the whole COVID thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And isolation was the one thing mm-hmm. that people wanted. And it's just oh, very yeah. it's very weird when you... How, like how many people when you bring their demons in that. Right. Uh-huh, exactly. You oh, know, how much man. worse things got when you ready. isolated yourself. Oh, That's yeah. the scariest part. It's is amazing. Like, it's one thing to turn and face your demons because you're choosing to. Yeah. But to make the world literally make you face right. your demons. That's, yeah. that's well, a yeah. scary place. Yeah. And that's I think crazy. that was, you know, COVID... I'm sure everybody can give their assessment of what oh, yeah. that was, but uh, I, think I think it's getting the assessment's getting a little bit more consistent, though. Which oh, is one thing I've come to realize. Right, right. Oh yeah, people oh, yeah. Are, that are free thinkers. We're diving in. Figuring Here comes this. a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> They're not conspiracy. Yeah, yeah up exactly. Anyway. Yeah, right. that's just so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, isolation, man. That's a dangerous place to be. 
you know, digging into my psyche in his mm. own way as a true friend and mentor. Yeah. Um, through patience and distance and advice and, and harsh honesty. Yeah. And, and this was born. I just, I mm. knew the underdog story is something that's always fascinated me. Yeah. Because I've been an underdog my whole life. Yeah. Oftentimes yeah. by the closest people to me. Right, right. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I don't hate them for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's more my. It's funny. My father and I, we've become so close lately. You know, he calls. He's like designated the three brothers. You know, uh, Brian is intelligence. Mm-hmm. Matt is instinct, mm-hmm. and I'm resilience. Okay. Uh, and I'm damn proud of that. Mm-hmm. You know, the world's. I feel like the devil's been knocking on my door my whole life. Yeah. And that's just because I let him. Mm-hmm. And he still knocks. Yeah, yeah. You know, but through the strength of God. Yeah, uh, I'm 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 stronger than I've ever been. So so this was this is how I see my life. Yeah, I'm learning how to take something that I once considered trash. Yeah, and turn it into treasure, and then most importantly, appreciate the treasure while while it lasts. Mm-hmm. Because I never like the storms are coming. Right, right. But yeah. that don't mean I have to ever be trash again. Trash is a it, it's a state of mind. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You know, you can, and it goes back to you know my true interpretation of heaven or hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I share Bob Marley's belief that heaven or hell, the reason it gives people so much joy and I think it's so important for people is you can choose to live in heaven mm-hmm. or you can choose to live in hell. Yeah. Today, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's your choice, bro. Yeah. It's truly your choice. Oh, yeah. You said it earlier, you gotta and you gotta make that choice every day. Yeah, right, every right, right, single right. day, like audibly. Yeah. You know, we yeah. talk about that on this podcast big time is, is like writing it down saying it out loud the, yeah, the written and spoken yeah. word is magic right 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 it's i think a, especially speaking it yeah yeah like well, I've it been, goes from the intangible to the tangible right, you know, right it's very important to put it in the tangible. it's like and i think god does something when you're like almost like obedient like he wants us to do that right so when we're obedient enough to just be like you know what i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna have a conversation with him mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like you know, most people are just don't even give it a chance. And ever. as a as a man, like yeah. with an ego and a pride, especially right. if you've been away from God for a while, that word alone yep. is terrifying. Mm, yeah. I remember when I first started going back to church a couple of months and they're like obey and I'm just like yeah. that little part of me is like, What did you just say? Yeah, to I'm me? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, then, yeah, right. but you I quickly like went back to those coincidences when God talked to me, I'm like, Oh yeah. No, no, I'll obey, I'll obey that guy, right, right, or, right. Or, or that being, or or the my, what I call the king and queen, or my mother. Oh yeah, yeah. whatever they tell me, I'm gonna listen. Like you right, got it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, totally. you're you're at the front of the line for sure. Yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. what he did or what they did in the last couple of years was nothing less than I've witnessed miracles. I've and you right. can call me crazy if you want. You know, I I've, I've seen God, oh, or yeah. not not himself, but he chose a certain way for me to right, to right. he. He chose to no, let me know, like, hey, I'm actually here. I'm real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was yeah, yeah. the Nothing most intense moment of my yeah. life. Yep. Hands down. I've seen some crazy fucked up shit, but this was this different. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I'll, I'll mention this real quick. Just the, the, the proof of God. Um, so my dad, this is a cool, really cool story, actually. Uh, when I was about four, I remember my dad... Um, I had lost something that was very valuable to me at the time. It was like this little wallet, you know, I think it was uh, Chips Patrol. Was, mm-hmm. This is way through back, but it was a show I loved. And uh, <laughs> so it was like a Chips wallet. <clears throat> I just got it and I was outside playing and I lost it. And um, I remember I came up, I was probably like crying, you know, and I was like, Dad, I can't find the wallet. I like, can't believe it. And so he's like, well, let's let's just pray, you know, let's sit here and have pray real quick that God will help us find it, you know, and cause God can do anything. And so we pray that prayer and we, you know, went around for probably like 10 minutes or so, retraced some steps. Anyway, ended up finding it out on the golf course somewhere where I'd been playing. And <laughs> I, I never forgot that. Yeah. And so, so I literally have done this same thing many, many, many times um, and I'm not going to claim I've found everything, but I'm, I'm going to tell you a couple stories real quick yeah. <laughs> where I did. Um, and, and I've been able to use that as an example, you know, for other people, other kids and things. Um, I was actually a youth director for like 14 years oh, wow. at a, awesome. a place in downtown Orlando. Um, it was like 
where inner city kids came and their families were rehabilitated and it was it was one of the it's beautiful most amazing seasons of my life yeah mm-hmm. um but um i remember one time um i think there it was a pair of like sunglasses or something and i we were out with those kids actually and um I dropped them into some water. A buddy of mine had given them to me, and they were some nice shades, like $150, $200 shades, you know. And I dropped, and I, I loved them because my my buddy, who's he's like my brother, actually. His name's Quinn Hollinsworth. Uh, shout out to Quinn uh, if he watches this. But um, mm-hmm. uh, anyway, so I looked down into the water. I was jumping on a jet ski or something, and the shades fell off into the lake, and it was like muddy. Oh, that's Like gone. you're not. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah, and you're just like, oh my, I was so upset. And I went up, you know, on the grass and I was just like, oh my, I cannot believe I lost. So I ended up not even going on the jet ski because I was bum. pissed off and like I was upset. And then, um, and then I think like one of the kids was with me and I, I don't know if I remember or maybe the kid, cause like I used to teach kids this kind of stuff, like yeah. pray, you know, like mm-hmm. about anything. But if you lose something, Sometimes you're super pissed off, you know, and you're just like, and and I'd be like, no, we gotta pray, hey, like God come through and He can help us find yeah, no problem. Run. So anyway, so we prayed for these sunglasses, okay, and like we go this. back down into the water, and there was like two, three, four of us started like searching, and I was like, there's not like we're there's no these way. are there's not no way, coming dude. back, <laughs> and bro, I swear to you, within like thirty seconds. Like I go down and I literally and you found them yourself. Pull them up, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh man, yeah, that's heavy. So like mm-hmm. stuff like that. There was another time at Ponce, a watch popped off my hand. Oh, get out of here! I swear to you, as I was getting up on the wave, the watch like flew into the water. So you're surfing? And yeah. Oh god! I surfed the wave <laughs> all the way in, and it was almost a joke at this point. Yeah. It was a test. It was just me out there and me and God, and I literally was like, "All right, God." Which, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to test this out. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to fly this, but I'm going to test it out. And so I literally prayed the prayer. I just tried to paddle out kind of like back where I thought it was. I swear to you, dove down. I picked this joker up. The watch, man. Like, it was, now, a, was, it was, a, was this a clear pond stay? Uh, it was clear, but I didn't really, I couldn't really see it necessarily. Oh, you, so but it just was like, just, I just... Tried to like paddle out that Best same you could, find like the rocks general where you spot. Think, okay. And I swear to you, I found that wow. thing. Wow. Like, and I probably funny. got more stories like it, but I oh, mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. just saying to you, like, it's. No, is it, is it, you just said the prayer. Is it like a specific set of word prayer or is this like you just change it to the, to the, you yeah, basically. Yeah, okay. just say like, like I said, it's almost like a, a joke sometimes now. Yeah, where like, you just said it yourself. All right, like, God, all right God, let's do this. Let's see if you're going to come through <laughs> this time. Like, <laughs> This will be really amazing, you know. Yeah, in amazing. fact, I just lost my AirPods. I'm reminding myself, but I haven't prayed yet. That big, <laughs> there you go. So, okay. Right. <laughs> Dude, if you find these AirPods, I want to tag yeah, them. Yeah, I got to say the prayer, though. I haven't <laughs> yeah, done yeah, that. Yeah, no, so. I want a picture saying, like, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll let you know. I'll All send right. you the photo, yeah. Um, but, so. yeah, before we wrap this up, man, th- first of all, from, from me, and I'm sure, like, thank you so much. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks, for thanks for opening on, up to dude, us. And, and share your story. And, this has and, been cool. And I can't wait, you know, if you want to come back on, you don't hesitate. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably going to bug you. That's who I am. Yeah, I'm man. Like, Bro, let's hear it. Let's but, you know, um, I, go ahead. Like, this is this is your time to go ahead and, and let the people know, like, where they can find you, how they can follow you, how they can subscribe to you, how can they help them at Dayton Journey. No, okay. Know, because yeah. I'm, sure you, I'm sure we're going to have all kinds of groms. They're going to be like, Bow! Yeah. So, yeah, let absolutely. them know. Let them know, dude. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, most of my, yeah, obviously Instagram, uh, that's kind of my jam. Um, and you know, God's, I think, bless me with that to have a little bit of a platform there, mm-hmm. um, to hopefully have a positive influence in some people's lives and just and what's your share. tag on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, at Matt double underscore Dayton. Okay. So, um, used to be M Dayton 360 forever. And then I was like, you know, what? I just need the, the name, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, Matt double underscore Dayton. Um, so yeah, I mean, and you know, I love video photography, all that. And I've been able to work with some amazing photographers, videographers, Max included, um, worked with him, done some cool stuff. 
Um, remember the drone through the the tower yeah, down in the yeah. inlet. I love that shot. Did you ever did you favorites. ever watch the full episode? The, the I did. Episode. Oh yeah, yeah. Came out pretty good, Absolutely. Man. Yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> it yeah, yeah. Good. That was super yeah. cool. You guys did a great job on that. Thanks, man. Thanks. Um, we got a lot done that day. Remember? Dude, that was, was like a twelve hour day we shot. We started at day. the inlet. We ended down in the lagoon. Yep. Oh, and we Sick. shot everything in between. We went, went to Jimmy Hula's. Yeah. Went to Red, went to Red Dog. Dog. I yeah. still have not gone to Jimmy Hula's yet. You what? Got to, not to the New Smyrna one. I, oh, okay. I, I've been going to the one in Lake Mary for years. Really? Yeah. yeah. Have you been in the one up uh, in, um, by um, on Dunlawton? Uh, Port Orange? Going, up, going towards Ponce? No. Yeah. I've been to the one there. Yeah. I've been to the one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Never really mind. Good. I did go there. Once. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite Fun one. Fun story. One of the best things. Sweetest memories I have of my ex-wife is uh, one thing we used to love to do. Mm. I can't believe I'm about to admit this on camera if they ever see it. <laughs> we, during Christmas season, we like to to just yoke a Christmas ornament from a date we were on. Okay. So like Jimmy Hula's, I have one of their Christmas ornaments. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> and like the garlic, you know those the ornaments they stick in the garden okay like on the stick yeah. i got like four of those <laughs> no way. anyways yeah it just made me hopefully think nobody's it. coming after you yeah. I, I, got, I got them in the garage yeah, i'll <laughs> return them someday right yeah, they were because i don't need any memories from her anyway, so there you go i'll, I'll drop them off this year, give, i promise give those back yeah yeah i will i just it just made me think about it maybe that's why you made me think about it um, yeah okay All right. um but yeah i thought that was funny yeah um awesome, so let's see shout outs um um, yeah. gosh, man, where do I start? Um, well, I, I, I really appreciated my relationship with Firewire and Slater Designs. Cool. Yeah. Um, that's been a, a really a dream come true for me to uh, build a relationship with the guys that, and they're just amazing humans, uh, more importantly. Mm -hmm. But um, guys like Mike Milliken, uh, Chris Grow. He was Shred Show, uh, mm -hmm. if you know from, uh, that's kind of where he got his mark in surfing, um, you know, reviewing all the boards and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but um, I got a, a call from, real quick, a call from Chris about a year ago. I was in Costa Rica, actually, just, and I had communicated with those guys a little bit, but he called me, he's like, hey man, like, I see, you know, you're really good at what you do on social media. Would you be interested in doing some marketing work with us here? And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like this is a, <laughs> yeah, absolute exactly. like dream come true that you would even call and ask me that question. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so I've been doing some cool stuff with them, just getting their like TikTok channels going. Um, go check them out. You know, Slater sure. Designs, Firewire, Slater Endorphins, um, and then obviously Kelly. Um, you know, I've been able to chat with him a few times, even um, and build a little bit of a relationship with him. Um, and just like, you know, Kelly's been my hero from everybody. <laughs> like hero. every server. <laughs> who's hero is he? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. and then you take Volusia, like you take Central Florida into effect. I mean, this is, yeah. this is our God. Exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, no, exactly. sorry. That was a joke. Right. <laughs> right. Kidding, but but second or second. Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> and what, what better ambassador to have exactly. truly for truly. surfers, you know, and like, role model too, because he's been clean. He's yeah. From what I can tell, yeah. I don't know yeah. him personally, but. Yep. What no, I he's do. an amazing person. No, he really is a solid, mm -hmm. solid dude. No doubt about it. Like, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. um, um, my first interaction, I'll tell you this story real quick. No, you're, you're um, good, man. Uh, I, still it, got, I still got to give you a pool lesson when we're done. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, my first time I met Kelly, uh, it was the winter of 99, and it was my first trip to the North Shore of Oahu. Mm -hmm. I got there. Uh, I just wanted to go see the Pipe Masters. And yeah. that was like my goal. And, and so I was there for two weeks, got to see the entire contest that year, wow. mm -hmm. which was one of the most insane things I've ever seen. I uh, got there at night. We went to Pipeline, you know, looked at the waves. Yeah, like, I feel it. Yeah. Uh, my buddy was staying close to sunset. Next morning we paddled out at Backyards, I think it was. Um, and then like the swell started building, you know, like literally went from like four to eight feet. And we're like, all right, it's getting big. They're probably going to run pipe. So went down, watched the pipe trials that day, which is where all the people, you know, all the guys trying to compete in the first and second place get into the Pipe Masters, okay. the main event. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the ocean was like nothing I'd ever seen, like super stormy, crazy pipe. Like, you know, 90% of the guys weren't even making the drops, just getting obliterated. Um, I know Bruce Irons ended up winning. I remember that. 
So he obviously went in the main event. And then when they finished that day, um, like all these guys run out, you know, to pipe, you know, to try to get a few before dark. And, uh, and then, uh, so, and then we saw Kelly, you know, run out. And as soon as we saw him, we're like, all right, we're sticking around for a little, you know, like the show and sure enough, you know, he went out and got a handful of bombs and, so they just get jazzed up after the comp and like that's how oh, much dude, you these see dudes him, love surfing where waiting. they're like, oh, you oh, see yeah, him waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see him they're waiting just... and as soon as the, you yeah. see everybody start paddling yeah, yeah, yeah. out immediately. Yeah. yeah. I mean wow, like. That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, you see how crowded pipe gets. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It's crazy. It's like, and I actually ended up paddling out at pipe um, like a week or so later, right before, it was the day before I was going to leave. Mm. You know, I was in my mid twenties at the time and I was like this is it yeah, like dude. if if it's if i'm ever gonna do it like this is the day you know mm-hmm. so um anyway but watch kelly uh you know get a few waves and then so it was me and my buddy and his girlfriend and she claimed that she kind of knew kelly a little bit um and i was like okay so i was like he came back up in on the beach and i was like well let's go if you know go, let's, yeah, go, let's go you meet know? this dude exactly man. so she took us over there and went up gave him you know a kiss on the cheek and sure enough like he uh, knew him a little bit and so we sat there and rapped with him for like 20 minutes right on the oh, beach man. Awesome. Pipe, and uh, ended up getting a few photos with him nice. you know and it was it was a moment you know i'll never forget that's awesome you yeah know? so um so that was really cool so anyway all that to say, very stoked to be able to say I can now, you know, work for his surfboard company um, that he started and um, which and now they're, you know, the number one surfboard company in the world. I mean, mm-hmm. selling more than anybody else. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, a, a couple of companies I'm working with now. Um, there's one. It's called Nat. Uh, let's see. Not natural. Super natural superfoods company is the name of it. it's uh, they're out of australia actually okay. and um they have like superfoods that they've developed and so they're a really great company that um the guy started it because uh, a family member like had cancer like a powder based mm-hmm. additive to drinks and such yeah yeah okay. yeah. yeah there's some uh, powder uh, just straight powders and then like capsules okay nice Very cool. some liquids some different things but basically he started this because he didn't have anything natural to combat like cancer and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. things like that. And, um, so it was like a passion project. Um, that is why he started it and it's now becoming pretty successful in Australia Awesome. and he's looking to expand here in the U S and, uh, and, and basically, um, we've connected and he really wants to get that going here. So that's something I'm another thing I'm working on. Uh, well, if we can help in any way with any of these promotions, let the us word, know. Man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I know we haven't dropped yet. So as we grow, if we can help with, with you on your, especially, like you're talking about some really awesome stuff, man. The yeah. surf camp out of Costa. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Like super food that are trying to like help people. Like mm-hmm. if we can help in any way. Yeah, no. Nah. I mean, it all goes hand in hand, you know, um, and just like being healthy, living a healthy life, yeah. you know, very important. surfing, man. all of it, man. And I mean... And you don't have to be a surfer, right? I no. mean, it's like it's, you just want to live just how, like that's how we yeah, found another it. outlet, right? That's it. Exactly. Yeah. But um, and that's the great thing about like a lot of these um, adventures that I'm, you know, trying to start. Uh, that's another thing I'll just kind of mention. So this year I'm working with um, a buddy of mine, childhood friend uh, Chuck Hollis, and we're working on um, a new business venture. Uh, it's going to be called. I think we're going to call it Epic Excursions. Oh, I like where this is going. Yeah, yeah. And so that's something um, we're real passionate about. He hit me up like a month ago with kind of the idea. Um, and this is something I've been wanting to do for um, really a couple of years. And I've, I've been doing a little bit of that, um, but haven't obviously had the, the backing, um, mm-hmm. you know, financially, um, administratively, that kind of thing that it, it's going to take to do something really well like well, you this. You want to talk about it a little bit? Maybe maybe somebody hears it and you get your financial backing. Yeah, well, I think I think we've got well, a unless good you're chunk on an NDA and you don't want to talk about. It. <clears throat> no, no, yeah. I mean, I think I think we're going to be okay, okay when it comes to that, okay, that nice. stuff. Okay, cool. I mean, I'm sure if there's you know some investor, but he he's pretty dialed with a lot of that cool. kind mm-hmm. of stuff already. And if if 
when this releases, if you want us to take this little section out for now until the LLC and the legal right, right, let right. us know, and then we'll okay. cut it back in. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, that's something I'm really excited about. Um, that's awesome, man. Going to meet with him on Wednesday, this Wednesday. But this is the little little project that we've been brainstorming, and uh, and I'm super excited about it, um, you know, because of my connections within the adventure tour community. guide, right? Is what I'm talking, is yeah. what you're talking about, where you're going to take take people down and show them a real Central American vacation. Kind exactly. Of thing. Okay. Yeah. So Ripping. not only like Central America, so I've got real good connections in Costa Rica. Uh -huh. the Surf Synergy is definitely going to be one of the spots, um, and, and I've got a couple other places mm -hmm. there uh, throughout Costa. Uh, just connected with another. Uh, buddy of mine that I'm, I'm hoping to do some other business with uh, his name's chip mcgraw and he's uh shout out to him he's up in um saint augustine okay uh but he's got a place <clears throat> basically kind of a five-star surf spot in uh, nicaragua um nice. yeah he owns the property and i mean it's uh, everything you need yeah you know? so awesome. so i'm gonna be starting to work with him cool, do some man. things there um so yeah i'm gonna meet with him later this week to kind of get the ball rolling um he actually just brought um ride I don't know if you've heard ryd it's a surf brand uh mm. that started in south africa it's in a couple other countries but he just uh brought it in uh to be, have distribution here in the states and in latin america Oh, that's so, awesome. Boards? Uh, so it's it's like or fins, uh, track top, board bags. It is, it's soft tops they started in, like really nice soft tops. And then okay. they, they actually did just start It's actually my next venture. My no, boy yeah. Mike, he, my boy Mike went out and got a soft top. He let me ride it. They're, they're a lot of fun. Oh, they're so, they're fun. so much fun. Dude. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I get yeah. the right one. Like I want a fun shape, a little heavier, longer one. Right. My, my boy Mike, he got like a dumpster diver. For, and dude... It's a blast. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah dude, I mean, I did not expect that. The, especially like the longer boards, man, like um, the seven footers. Like, that's, I've got a seven footer right now, mm -hmm. and it's like one of the funnest boards. Even dude. I've got a six footer too, that's just like, dude, when it's small, like, you can just go out and cruise on those things and have so Carefree. much fun. Yeah. Like, me and Mike are like, tackling each other and shit like yeah we're like, kind of snake up on him and just spear him off with right. no concern that i'm about to break anything that's yeah. right that's right it's epic, so yeah so shout out to to chip and and ride um so they'll be coming up you know in a lot more surf shops cool. here awesome and, man. um so that's exciting um god what other companies cg habitats i gotta mention them they've been taking care of me so they started as a snowboard company and they've kind of ventured out into some of the surf stuff as cool. well they do like a lot of fishing shirts things nice. like that um but cg habitats has been really really good to me done a bunch of like campaign stuff with them um let's see gosh i mean freestyle watches i've been doing nice. some stuff with them nevin eyewear another one um Got to shout out Red Dog Surf Shop. Yeah, Red Dog. I mean, right. Yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, dude. bought my one of my first boards there when I was, you know, like 13. That was like, <laughs> that's been my surf shop, obviously, for a really long time. So mm -hmm. I try to avoid it because, like, I've walked out of, like, I've walked out of there with used boards more times than I probably should. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's the yeah. feeling. It's like Tempted. a guitar or, or something. You know, once it hits under the arm, I'm like, well, this has to come with me now. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they've got a great used board they selection. Do. That clever yeah. sitting out there that you walk by, that's my yep. favorite board in the quiver, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little classic and 20. A little shorter to... than I'd like, but yeah, it's okay. Go, if you need it. New board or any gear, go see Caleb Johnson. Yeah. Boy. yeah oh, he's going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> he's the man. Dude. I love Caleb. He told me, he goes, he goes dude, I'm going to start making freaking uh, um, meet people by appointment. Right? Because it's like everybody walks in and if I'm not in the, if I'm not in the shop, people walk right back out. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's... <laughs> you hear it, folks. Next week, Caleb Johnson tries the treasure. That's yeah. right. Yeah, That's he's right. following you up next week, dude. Mm -hmm. Is he? Yeah, yeah he's no way. He'll be Sick. on Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool, dude. man. I love Caleb. It's funny. I'll tell you a story, just my personal uh, story with Caleb. So I've surfed with him a long time. Him and his brother, Jeremy, obviously, some of the best surfers out there, the OGs mm -hmm. of the inlet, watched them grow up. And um, But Caleb was always, like, real quiet. Um, and so I never really talked to him. And I kind of was like, man, this guy is just quiet to himself, but didn't really know what he was about, you know? And I was like, 
either he's just quiet to himself or maybe he's a jerk, you know, like mm -hmm. I just will never talk to him want anything to do with them and um you know there's a lot of cocky people at the end like yeah. you know they're just punks right yeah so you never know and uh and then i started going to red dog when he started working there and i mean instantly we struck up conversation i was like dude caleb's one of the best dudes on yeah. the planet mm -hmm. like super yep. good guy and um you know from that point on you know i was become a friend for yeah. sure amen and um so you know i honestly don't even go in there unless Caleb's there. <laughs> Just yesterday, I did that exact thing. Yep. Uh, after church, I went to grab a bite. Yeah. And I was coming down Flagler. I was like, I don't want to drive down Flagler. I was like, I'm going to go see if Caleb's working. I literally <laughs> said it. I was like, I was gonna, just going to pop in and talk to him. It's funny because now that we're saying this, that they just did, they do really funny skits on Instagram. Oh, yeah. You've probably yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they just did one where the uh, another guy that works there, I don't remember his name, but he they make fun of that. And and he's sitting there going, oh, everybody just wants to talk to Caleb. Yeah, you know and that's all they want to talk to. He's like, well, screw that. He's like, I'm just gonna be Caleb now. Like, I'm gonna tell everybody <laughs> I'm Caleb. And like, yeah, you gotta go and watch it. It's hilarious. I will so. say this. Shout out to the whole crew in there. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Because really. oh, like Caleb, yeah. but everyone in there. Like, if you're in town, if you're ever in our our neck of the woods, and and you want to shop, and if you want the real local experience, mm -hmm. yeah, and you want to buy, so don't. Don't don't get me wrong. I love Quiet Flight, um, but but <laughs> yeah, not the local go, go check go go check out our folks at Red Dog because no, yeah, like 100%. I mean they, I, they make you feel like family in there. And, yeah, and that's yeah, not yeah. just us. Like they're gonna show. Right. You can come in with a Disney T-shirt on, and they ain't gonna judge you. Right, yeah. right. You know, hundred like, percent. But now back when Inlet Charlie was was Inlet Charlie's, that was my stomping grounds because right, right, right. Because right. that was you know good old flagler. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. a good that's a good shout out right there. Oh yeah, Red I mean, dog, come on, goodness. Red Dog. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think anybody else. Ah, man, I think those are the big ones for awesome, sure. Man. And if you awesome. think any more after this, like you can, and we'll we'll put the tags like written in. I know okay. There won't be a video. And we'll call put out. your, yeah, we'll put your links down in the oh, description yeah, yeah, and everything. So okay. Can visit yeah. You. yeah, yeah, we'll do I mean, it because that's a that's a yeah. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah for right? sure. Absolutely, awesome. man. Yeah, I think the, those are definitely hit on the big ones for okay, sure. Cool. So. Awesome, man. Um, well, the biggest shout out is, is to you, my friend. Thank yeah. you. So Thank epic, you so man. For Thanks for opening yeah, up. Thanks been, yeah. for, for a lot of for fun, guys. It is yeah. a blast. Man. This is appreciate you having everything me. we live for now. Yeah, this, is, this is amazing. This is epic. I'm right. glad you were able to be part it, of it right, right off the bat, man. Heck yeah. <laughs> well, I look forward to hanging with you guys again soon.